as you did all deals with roof credit stock number g21473 big box stores are tempting for buying equipment for your high schooler in sports or for yourself in your sports leisures but buying new is awfully expensive why not go somewhere with new and used options play it against sports is quality slightly to gently used equipment and 50 percent of their inventory is actually new equipment and it's more than baseball softball and golf they also have equipment for disc golf fitness hockey and more plus they're always buying products bring your gear you're done with and get trade money on the spot play it against sports at 48th and vine houses they're expensive and once you buy one you're kind of stuck with it for a while you need to make sure you get your best house for the best price you need ben bleicher and his team of pros at professional realty group they'll take the time to figure out what's important for you in your dream home and they have the expertise to find the hidden issues that could surprise you after the sale that's professional knowledge proactive service we call that potential ben bleicher and the team at professional realty group of berkshire hathaway's home service ambassador find more online at prg-ne.com for over 15 years, Integrated Life Choices has empowered individuals with disabilities in Lincoln and throughout Nebraska. They provide comprehensive services from group homes and independent living services to job training, ensuring fulfilling lives for those that they serve. Now, they're inviting you to join their mission. If you are passionate about making a difference in the lives of people with developmental disabilities, explore rewarding career opportunities with them. Learn more about their services and apply today at www.ilc.net. Be a part of Integrated Life Choices, where your work truly changes lives. Forget the lame excuse this year. Your boss already knows why you can't make it to work for those magical two days in mid-March. Join 93.7 The Ticket on Thursday and Friday, March 21st and 22nd at Buffalo Wings and Rings at 68th and O for March Mayhem. Come early on Thursday and get a ping pong ball with a lucky team on it and stay all day for prizes throughout and buzzer beater upsets. It's March Mayhem with 93-7 the ticket for the NCAA tournament at Buffalo Wings and Rings, 68th and 0. You're counting on your team to win, so why not prove it? At Warhorse Sportsbook, their win is your win. Put your money where your mouth is on nearly every sporting event. Use the Warhorse app to check odds and build your bets before placing your wagers in person at Warhorse Casino in Lincoln or Horseman's Park in Omaha, including live in-game betting. No bets, no glory. Wagers may only be placed on Nebraska-based teams when played outside the state of Nebraska. Must be 21 or older to gamble. Gambling problem? Call 1-833-BET-OVER. Spring is here. It's time to get back outside and into proper shoes this year. Brown Shoe Fit is the place to buy this spring with their sale on athletic shoes. Get $15 off any regular price athletic shoes with respected brands like Hoka, Brooks, New Balance, and On Running. And don't forget, Brown's carries a large arrangement of sizes and widths to fit your feet properly. Start your spring off right at Brown Shoe Fit, just south of 66 and Q in Lincoln. 93.7 The Ticket is proud to provide listeners with daily opportunities to win contests and prizes on our airwaves, and we'd like to take this opportunity to remind you of a couple rules. All participants must be 21 or older and must wait 30 days after winning a prize before participating in another contest. Once you win, you have 30 days to pick up your prize at the KNTK Studios, 1040 O Street in Lincoln, or your prize will be forfeited. Thank you for participating in our contest, and thank you for listening to 93.7 The Ticket. This is Lincoln's home for sports talk on the FM dial. Also online at theticketfm.com. On the internet. KNTK FM Firth, 93.7 The Ticket. You're listening to coverage of the NCAA tournament live from Buffalo Wings and Rings at 68th and 0 on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. This is On the Block with Strick and Austin. Nebraska Basketball Hall of Famer and nine-year NBA vet. Eric Strickland. Strickland for three. And you're going to go out of here as the Big Eight tournament champion. Middle school basketball coaching legend and Duke basketball shooting coach in his mind, Austin Orman. Coming at you live from the heart of Lincoln, America, on air and online at theticketfm.com. Presented by Nipco. This <laughs> is On the Block with Stricken Austin. I'm getting shooting lessons from the two best shooters that I know, Austin Orman and Jake Bakovin. Why the mic off? There we go. There there go. Don't mute me on my own show. Yeah, <laughs> you did. Right right here. Right I'm Austin, one of your normal hosts of On the Block. Stricky and Jake had some uh, 
dilemmas arise. Yes, it is. So Stricky was supposed to be on for the show, at least a little bit of it potentially, but uh, they're on the road to Memphis. Not the highway of the skies, the actual highway. Literally on so, the road. <laughs> literally. Hitting, pounding pavement, all that stuff. So safe travels to them. I hope they vlog it. I want to know. Oh, I want to know what Strick and Jake. Drive yeah, I want to know what Strick and Jake driving down to Memphis is like. Oh, who gets to, who gets control of the radio? Who gets control? Who is the aux cord? Strick is chill enough that he gives it to Jake. Uh huh. But once they switch, Stricky's not giving it back. Is there a lot of talking, <laughs> or are they just? It's ten hours. That's a ten hour drive. Like you're gonna, you have to talk at some point, right? Yeah. Eventually. I think two hours of, of, of talking. <laughs> Do they come back? Here we go. Do they come back as best friends? <laughs> no. No. Strick's my best friend. <laughs> Do they uh, come back and Strick's like, all right, I'm on early break now. Sip and Bill are going to go do on the block with Austin. Are you guys, and I know Strick is, is on a little bit of a diet. Are you guys, are you allowed to not, to kind of get off the diet if you're on a 10? I mean, that's the gas station food. There's no dieting there. Yeah. That man had a salad at Buffalo Wings and Rings. It's yeah. not Buffalo salad at Rings. <laughs> Although they do have good salads. I'm I mean, sure they yeah. do. But... but I ain't getting no salad. <laughs> yeah, I'm, here for the, I'm here for the wings. <laughs> and, and the rings. You know, that's right. I'm not, yeah. a, I'm not a fan of onion rings. You got your rings up. But I got, I got some french fries, and they got some pretty good french fries. Yeah, that's the, this is the only ring I'm french. a fan of. Right <laughs> there. Right there. Shout out to Rachel. I love you. Speaking of rings... The, the purpose of On the Block brought to you by Nebco. Visit them at nebcoinc.com uh, to start your new career today. Pay for CDL training, $2,500 hiring bonus, all that good stuff, nebcoinc.com. We're just going to go through the bracket, right? It sounds simple, sounds reductionist, but we've all made our picks. We've mm -hmm. gone through. We're just going to do this region by region. We're going to go through Bet. one region per segment, say this is why we're picking these teams. These are the matchups that we're looking for. Okay, so let's start in... The South region. I think that's the natural jumping off point for mm. this. Top right of the bracket, um, where Nebraska is at. Nebraska and Texas A&M. Let's get our Nebraska conversation out of the way now. Do we all have them winning? Yes. Do we all feel confident about them winning? No. Bach? Yeah, I do have them winning. It'd be, it feels like after waiting 10 years to get back to the tournament, it'd be hard to predict against them, especially... Uh, when they're the eight seed going up against the nine, would it really be hard to predict against them when they've never <laughs> won a tournament game? Maybe I, I feel the magic. I think the magic's in the air. I, I, and I, you know, again, if you're looking for, to win a tournament game, what better way to do it than the eight nine game where it's basically 50 50 ball here? That's fair. I don't feel very confident about that. I picked don't them to win, but I'm not feeling like I, I do feel the magic, and I feel like this out of all the years, this is the year that feels the most like Nebraska is going to win a tournament game. But, man, they got a tough draw. In in things that they don't do well, this is not the team that you wanted to face. So it's scary. I don't feel very confident about it, but I do feel like Nebraska will get the win tomorrow against Texas a and City Worker on the text line says, Jake has the ox currently making everyone listen to ABBA. <laughs> that sounds about right. Sounds... Every, everyone is strict, by the way. So it's just yeah, yeah. <laughs> make it strict. Listen. Um, okay, so then Longwood and Houston will be the game, uh, I believe, after Nebraska um, tonight. Anyone getting spicy and taking Longwood? Or are we we in agreement? With Houston. The <laughs> only person who's taking Longwood in this entire building is Nick Sainert, who's sitting over there, sitting right feasting on his food. <laughs> is DP picking Longwood? Did DP pick Longwood? DP didn't pick Longwood. <laughs> Yeah, okay, all right, all right. I guess DP picked Longwood also. Care to explain, DP? Well, they're from Virginia. They're from Farmville, Virginia. That's where they're at. So so that's why he's he's going with his uh, home state. What is what is wrong? Well, I didn't think you'd pick Longwood. You were in Texas also. I thought you'd, I thought you'd go with Houston. Where I just met Texas. <laughs> I just met them. A fling. Yeah, I, I just met this is the thing, but you've known you've known Virginia all your life. I, I listen, I have receipts from Parkville, Virginia. <laughs> Do okay, okay. I have I have stories on campus. Uh as a matter of fact, that basketball gym. <laughs> okay. Okay. That basketball gym. Okay, so there are two people in this building that yeah. have picked Longwood <laughs> yeah. and they both both work for yeah. the ticket. One has absolutely zero connections, but the other one has Tons of connections. So two players that I coach are, are in the Longwood Hall of Fame. Okay. The most recent being Joseph Lowe. Joe Lowe, brother Joe Lowe from Arlington, Virginia. All right. So Longwood, I got a long history with them. Uh, yeah. All right. So, so two people so picking Longwood. 
Dukes. Of course I took the Dukes. Of course he did. Wait, you you have you met me? <laughs> all Virginia, uh, hey, yeah, all Virginia, yeah. all the time. DMV. Yeah, no, James. Well, so technically, Harrisonburg is not the DMV. Technically, it's not okay. Well, because Northern Virginia is yep. considered part of the DMV. Uh, Harris Harrisonburg, while fun <laughs> and quite the party town. Shout out to the old to the old forty four hundred club in Old Dominion and the old Duke <laughs> right there in Harrisonburg. Uh, 13 concerts in Harrisonburg. Okay. In, in that gymnasium. Okay. Yeah. Shout out to my boy, Kennard Winchester, uh, <laughs> who played for the Knicks through via, through James Madison. Big fan. Yeah. Linton Towns. Yeah, there's some dudes. I have some history down Big there. As well. All right. All yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> all right. All right. So anything Virginia DP picked, uh, but also Nick picked. Well, he didn't pick Longwood, but he would love Longwood to win. Uh, I don't know if his gear got here yet or not. Okay, he, he's got his gear. Tomorrow. He's going to wear it tomorrow. It's going to be bedazzled uh, by his girlfriend, and he'll be coming in sparkling, <laughs> shining like a diamond. Um, Are you but, guys taking Wisconsin or the Dukes? Um, Five versus 12. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but I did pick Wisconsin. I do I do think that Chucky Hepburn, shout out to Bellevue West, gets it done with, with Wisconsin. Yeah, Wisconsin's been playing well as of late, obviously, that in the Big Ten tournament run. Um, but... Uh, the Dukes only have three losses on the year, and they score a lot of points. So I think that's going to be a, a wildly entertaining game. I, I, I'll be honest. I filled out two brackets, and I picked one each way. Uh, <laughs> so I can't really say. But uh, I'd like to see you know, I'd like to see Wisconsin make a run. But who doesn't also like to see Wisconsin get upset in the first round? You ain't I, wrong. I would not like to see Wisconsin make a run, but I think they're playing too good. And Wisconsin hates me enough to spite me, so they will beat James that's right. Madison. <laughs> Duke, Vermont. You already know which way I'm going. Vermont. Uh, Caleb Foster already announced out with a stress fracture. That's a part-time starter for Duke they won't have available. I am still going – Bowl City, baby. I did say you got to watch out for the Catamounts. Vermont always John likes Decker. to – the Catamounts always like to just be there and be feisty. Um, but I do think that Duke, even if it's a down year for the Blue Devils, uh, at least gets out of the first round, at saying, the very least. Duke, I think you can – and we'll have to ask a Duke fan because they can remember this well. But over – like, I know it was Coach K. But they just weren't – they would very rarely be the team to get knocked out early in the first round. They're very memorable when it happened. When you think about right. Lehigh and Shout DCU, out to C.J. McCollum. Yeah. It, uh, and uh, Mercer got mm-hmm. him as well. But, yes, more often than not, I think like 90% of the time, Duke makes it out of the first round. Yeah. So, I mean, I, that's uh, it just – that sticks to me. I never pick Duke usually to lose in the first round. Bottom half of the bracket, Texas Tech is six seed out of the Big 12. Against the the Miracle Cats, yes. five games in five days. North Carolina State. I think the Cats are out of gas. I think this is a, a sixty one to fifty nine game. Yeah, usually those stories uh, of just teams that shouldn't have been in before the before the tournament run usually end up being just the tournament being the the big story. So yeah, I think Texas Tech a good good team to watch for a sneaky team in this South region where there's so many big names. Texas Tech uh, can certainly make a run. I watched Texas Tech play UCF down in Orlando. Texas Tech sucks. Uh, give me- <laughs> you, did, you did see UCF get that win, didn't you? Give me NC State. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like relying on the eye test. There you go. I saw them play. UCF, UCF out physical them. No matter how much you want to say that Texas Tech is a physical team. And, you know, it's one game. But still, I saw them play. Give me NC State, baby. <laughs> the miracle run continues for the Wolfpack. Kentucky and Oakland is an interesting matchup. Because of the relationship between Coach Cal and Greg Camp, the, the head coach of Oakland, this game, I'm not going to pick Oakland. I think I'm pretty confident that they cover and give Kentucky a run, but I think Kentucky's just too talented and scores too much in the end. Yeah, this Kentucky team, it's it's one of those where it's still young, they're doing their thing, and you have your, your coach who hasn't been able to win a national championship with his young teams, but this team, I'm not saying they're going to win a national championship, but they're supremely talented, and I, I – I really like, you know, Detroit, Oakland, Um, not the California Oakland. This is the Detroit (laughs) Oakland. I really like them, but I don't see them getting past uh, this blue blood team and then this Kentucky team. Yeah, I've got Kentucky going all the way for one of my picks. I mean, they're just so deep. uh, And and I like to think that maybe this could be the surprising Calipari run that you see. A lot of times with these programs, too, it's not always the best of like it wouldn't be the best of the Kentucky teams. No, Uh, You can't really argue that, but sometimes it's just. That that year, that bracket, and somebody's got to get it done. I think Kentucky also. I mean, they've they've had they've knocked out some really good teams on their schedule. Obviously, Kentucky, you're always going to get the best shot, 
Um, so I'm, I've been really impressed with them, and I think they could make a big run in this tournament. We're going through the South region here during On the Block, brought to you by Nebco, live from Buffalo Wings and Rings on 68th and O. Florida and Colorado, the play-in winner. Uh, we'll start at that end of the table. Rico. What Florida, are we talking Colorado. about? Florida, Florida Colorado. Colorado. Look, Florida, I wanted to pick against Florida because their big man snapped his leg. Um, gross. But – <laughs> we talked about it with Louisville where, you know, sometimes a traumatic event like that can kind of galvanize a team. I'm not saying they're going to win the national title, but they at least get out of the first round. Plus, it's a really good Florida squad. Uh, Colorado having to do that play in in Dayton kind of gave them a little bit more mojo. But I think the Gators get it done. Yeah, I don't have much to add there. I, 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 I kind of I, I mean, close game going to be tough to pr- predict one either way. Uh, but Colorado didn't look necessarily too impressive in the rock fight with Boise State. So I'll lean with Florida. Colorado ain't hard to find. I got the buffs. I got the <laughs> buffaloes right. taking down Florida. No, it, no in home like business. Yeah, <laughs> ain't, I, I ain't hard to find. You know where to. You know where to come get me because I ain't coming to you. Uh, Marquette, Western Kentucky. Anyone going out on a limb with the Hilltoppers? Ain't nobody going with the Hilltoppers. No. I'm sorry. Shout out to Paige Briggs playing for the Omaha Supernovas for the uh, Western Kentucky Hilltoppers. But what uh, the Supernovas. It's been so long since they played. It's been like a week. It? It's been forever. But uh, no, nah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with uh, Marquette on this one. The Golden Eagles and and full head of hair, Shaka Smart. And no, Nick, I'm not doing it because you – you know what? You should feel bad. He picked Marquette to win the whole thing. I got Marquette going to the championship boy. game. He should feel Man bad because boy. I'm not good at this. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start at the bottom of the south and work our way back up then. I have Marquette over Colorado in the round of 32. Are you guys taking Marquette or Florida in round two? I got Marquette going to the final four. Yeah, shout Even out. And Golden Eagles. Shout out to Bill back uh, running the board too. He's also got Marquette going all the way – with these, with too many picks of Marquette, probably means they're going to lose. But, exactly. Yeah. That's that's usually what happens. <laughs> unless unless it's this year, they don't. Do yes. you think Shaka unless. Smart shaves his head if they win, or he keeps going? No, grow it out. I think he should. Absolutely grow. I don't out. like him with hair. It scares me. Kentucky or Texas Tech? Bach, we'll start with you. Uh, like I said, I, I got Kentucky going quite a bit of ways here, so I'd go with uh, Kentucky. I had NC State winning, and okay. I got NC State going. Ooh. Take that, Kentucky. Wolfpack <laughs> over the Wildcats. The magic continues. I've got Kentucky over Texas Tech, and I think Kentucky is more and more comfortable playing games like Texas Tech uh, because of some of the competition they faced in the SEC. Top half of the bracket. I've got the 4-5 matchup between Duke and Wisconsin. I don't think that Duke is a good matchup for Wisconsin. I think Wisconsin's style will play into Duke's hands. Wisconsin will play the two bigs. I think Duke can spread the floor pretty well. It ends up out shooting Wisconsin in a game played in the seventies. A heck of a, a heck of a second round <laughs> matchup uh, Duke and Wisconsin would be. So kind of again, you kind of hope for the upsets, upsets, but sometimes you just kind of want to see things play out. I, I would I would pick Duke to, to win that game as well. Um, Wisconsin again, they've been so hot and cold. I don't I don't necessarily know if their run's going to continue, um, but that's a it, it's a tough matchup for them. It's like me picking the Chiefs to win the Super Bowl. I'm not doing it for me. I'm doing it for my wife. I got Duke over Wisconsin. <laughs> there we go. Okay, Houston and Nebraska. Does the run continue for the Scurs after they get it done tomorrow night? I have. I hear way too many people saying that whoever wins the nebraska Texas A&M matchup will beat Houston in the second round. I don't like that. It scares me. I'm going to go with Houston and the Cougs over Nebraska. But Nebraska does get their first win in the NCAA tournament, so everybody can be happy. Well, it's funny because we've, I mean, we've obviously been uh, privy to Kase Tamanaga and his, his crazy style over the last couple of, of, of years. Um, this is the nation. This is what the nation is waiting for. And if Nebraska can pull off the victory over Houston, you get a whole week of people talking about Kase in Nebraska you know, uh, memories of Steph Curry in the, in the tournament. And there, there's going to be a lot of comparisons because he got to be draining threes left and right. I don't, I mean, I don't, I, I can't go as far as to pick it, but I, I, I can, I can live in my dream world and it's, it could be a few days away. It would be interesting. I haven't talked myself out of Houston in that matchup and I haven't talked myself into Nebraska, but I see the path. It's yeah. on the table. It's possible. Okay. So I believe we are on to you, who are you week. picking uh, Houston. Okay. There Houston. we go. I thought that was clear. No, it wasn't. Yeah, I'm taking Houston. <laughs> you, were trying to, you were trying to weasel your way out of it. I seen it. I've also got Houston over Duke in the Sweet 16, mm-hmm. and I've got Kentucky over Marquette in the Sweet 16. Where do you guys fall there? Houston over Duke. This Houston team, you know, although inconsistent this season, when they are playing well, they are, like, the best team in the nation. I got them going over Duke. Um, and then 
NC State's magical run, unfortunately, ends at the hands of Marquette. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll stick with you, too. I think Houston gets all, gets past Duke. Okay. Um, and then uh, bottom half of the bracket, Kentucky? Kentucky over Marquette for me, yeah. Marquette. Marquette, okay. Then the Elite Eight in the South region. Clash of styles is what I have. I have Houston and Kentucky facing off in the regional final, the mm. one versus the three. I think there would be approximately a bajillion points scored in UConn Marquette. I think there would be fewer than a bajillion scored in Houston Duke. So just like Nebraska A&M, whichever team I think imposes its will on the first and last four minutes of each half wins a matchup between Houston and Kentucky. Houston will have had about a week off to prepare. They're not a deep team as opposed to Kentucky, but I think Houston's age and experience shines through in this matchup. Houston is my final four team out of the South region. Good pick. Good pick. Not so fast, my friend. <laughs> hey, pick up the butter knife. Not so fast, my friend. There you go. Yeah, like I said, I got Kentucky making a run here. I think their depth is, is just too much for Houston there. Um, but you're right. I mean, it's a clash of styles, so it kind of depends on whose game we're playing there. But I like Kentucky to, to make that magical run and get out of the South region. Hey, the Big East is going up in the Elite Eight, going to the Final Four. Marquette over Houston, although they have the week off, and Houston is a fantastic defensive team. I just think Marquette's ability to explode, literally explode on the offensive side of the ball and score as many points as necessary to win any type of game will come in handy, and that's exactly what they'll do. They'll take advantage of, of Houston and uh, get the win. On the text line, 402-464-5685, where we are taking your input still all day. Uh, thanks to Sarder Hamish for sponsoring the text line and the video stream, where we see Justin commenting there on YouTube. Uh, but Lemon on the text line says, Our metrics, Nebraska's are similar to Iowa State. They've played Houston twice, smoked them in the championship game in the Big 12 tournament. There's definitely a path that we got to worry about AM first. Yes, yes, yes. Let's take a break. When we get back, we'll go through the Midwest region. For Give my me. money, the most interesting region in the bracket. The South region is where my heart resides. My head is looking at this Midwest bracket for chaos potential. Rico, Bach, Austin, on the block. More next. You're listening to coverage of the NCAA tournament live from Buffalo Wings and Rings at 68th and 0 on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. You're counting on your team to win, so why not prove it? At Warhorse Sportsbook, their win is your win. Put your money where your mouth is on nearly every sporting event. Use the Warhorse app to check odds and build your bets before placing your wagers in person at Warhorse Casino in Lincoln or Horseman's Park in Omaha, including live in-game betting. No bets, no glory. Wagers may only be placed on Nebraska-based teams when played outside the state of Nebraska. Must be 21 or older to gamble. Gambling problem? Call 1-833-BET-OVER. Hey there, fellas. It's your girl Jordan with Sarder Heyman Jewelry. Women may be complicated, but I make sure buying jewelry isn't. Your gal has a style, and you can figure this out. Is she more of a classic necklace kind of gal, or does she rock the boho chic vibe with layers of delicate bracelets? This is crucial intel. Not trusting your intel? Stop in the store and we'll sort out the details. I promise to make this super easy. Until next time, this is Jordan at Sarder Heyman Jewelry. Happy shopping, guys. Nutrition Authority invites you to try Anarchy, which is an exciting free workout for athletes and fitness enthusiasts who want the most out of the workout. Anarchy can only be found at Nutrition Authority. Remember, when you want results, the solution is simple. Nutrition Authority. Stop in, call, or check us out at MyNutritionAuthority.com. Ever wish you had another light switch on the other side of the room on a dark night? How much better would you sleep at night if you had a ceiling fan in your room? The High Electric Service Department is here to make your electrical what-ifs a reality. Whether you're looking to replace some outdated light fixtures or brighten up your counters with under-cabinet lighting, High Electric can handle all types of residential electrical installations and services. Give Erica a call at 402-466-6606 or visit high-electric.com to get started. For over 15 years, Integrated Life Choices has empowered individuals with disabilities in Lincoln and throughout Nebraska. They provide comprehensive services from group homes and independent living services to job training, ensuring fulfilling lives for those that they serve. Now, they're inviting you to join their mission. If you are passionate about making a difference in the lives of people with developmental disabilities, explore rewarding career opportunities with them. Learn more about their services and apply today at www.ilc.net. Be a part of Integrated Life Choices, where your work truly changes lives. If you're in Seward or Milford, listen up. 
Select Plumbing is now servicing your area with no trip charges from Lincoln. Select Plumbing works on a variety of issues for your home and business, including general plumbing, water heaters, faucet and fixture repair, underground sewer and water repairs, backflow testing, and more. Keep your property free from leaks and other issues. Call today for a free estimate, 402-560-6197. It's not just Lincoln, Waverly, and the surrounding area anymore. It's also Seward and Milford with no trip charges. Contact Select Plumbing to inquire, 402-560-6197. At Union Bank, people don't have your money. Your money has people. First home people, investment people, people people, people who answer the phone and your chats. Dream car people, dream retirement people, driving your dream car in your dream retirement people, small business people, credit card people, and all the other people you need. At Union Bank, our people help you do more than you dreamed possible. So stop in and say hello. We can't wait to see you. Union Bank and Trust, member FDIC. Ironhide Construction is hiring. They're looking for hardworking, self-motivated individuals who are team players. Ironhide Construction has openings for an experienced project manager, estimator, apprentice, skilled laborer, and a rector or installer. They will train the right people and make sure you understand the position and requirements. At Ironhide Construction, it's own it, be honest, and do it right. Apply today and learn more about their other benefits at ironhideconstruction.com where they're committed to you every step of the way. Rashawn Jackson here for Bauer Underground, who has been serving local contractors and utility contractors all across the state since 1997. When you see the black and white trucks, you know the baddest dudes in the business have arrived. Bauer is currently looking for equipment operators, laborers, diesel mechanics, and aerial linemen. Join the brotherhood built on hard work, authentic people, and pedigree of success. Bauer, a family-friendly company who reminds you Go be red. Action Plumbing, Heating, Air, and Electric is the call I make when I have a need for plumbing services. Whether it's for my home or office, if I need a repair to a water heater, softener, or even my garbage disposal, I know I can count on Action to help. In one simple call, their amazing customer service team promptly schedules a service call, often getting to my needs within a day. Action delivers honest, quality services we can count on. To learn more, visit actionlincoln.com. 93.7 The Ticket, Fox, KFXL Weather. Sponsored by John Henry's Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning. Your Lincoln forecast for today, a few flurries possible this morning. Otherwise, mainly cloudy and breezy today with an afternoon high around 56. Tonight, a chance of showers. Otherwise, mainly cloudy with a low around 39. And tomorrow, decreasing clouds will be breezy too, the high around 52. I mean, you're all just Kyle Puck, 93.7 The Ticket, and theticketfm.com. You're listening to coverage of the NCAA tournament live from Buffalo Wings and Rings at 68th and 0 on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Now back to On the Block with Strick and Austin on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Jordan P. sent in his final four picks on the text line, 402-464-5685. Feel free to send yours in as well. We got through the South region. I ended up with UConn. Bach, you ended up with? Kentucky. Nick, your pick out of the South region for the final four, top right corner. Well, it's certainly not Houston, let me tell you, because the Lancers of Longwood are going to knock them off tomorrow night. Um, I I like Marquette. Okay. And and a big reason why, Tyler Kolek, right? So so Tyler Kolek had a full week of of full contact practice this week for the Golden Eagles. That's a big reason why. I mean, this is a guy that had 18 assists earlier this year in a game. He, He is a facilitator as well as a scorer. Um, for, for, for Shaka Smart, and, and I, you know how big of a fan I am of Igodaro. <laughs> Indeed. Let's move down the right side of the bracket to the Midwest region. Go pick by pick all the way to the final four. Anyone have Purdue two years in a row going out in a 116? <laughs> I do not. I do not. Bach? Not quite, but I am a little nervous. <laughs> okay, Utah State, probable national coach of the year, Danny Sprinkle. The job yeah. he did was great. And Jamie Dixon still does all the moderate TCU in the 8-9 matchup. Bach, we'll start with you. Aggies or Horn Frogs? Uh, TCU's kind of have, going through a rough stretch here lately, so I'll go with Utah State. Not a high degree of confidence, but uh, I'll take it there. And that's, again, part of the reason I think that, that Purdue, you know, it, it, you get nervous about them, but I, I think they match up well with either of those teams in the second round. Um, so it's hard to pick Purdue to not make the Sweet 16, but they might find a way. But in this case, I'll go with Utah State. 
Nick? I, I like Utah State as well. I, I'm just not – ever since uh, Nebraska I, – I used to love – okay, this is going to be a sidebar tangent. Used to love <laughs> TCU baseball. Yep. Um, sure. In the days of, like, Brandon Finnegan, like the Horn Frogs and all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So ah, I, I, I loved watching them in Omaha, TCU Horn Frogs baseball. Um, I can't stand them – I don't. I didn't mind their football team when they were like with Trayvon Boykin. Yeah. Sure. Uh, but I cannot stand watching them play basketball. And maybe it's because they knocked Nebraska out of the NIT on the road Scaly a couple court. of years ago. Yeah, Scaly Court. Um, Red so three point line. I'm, I'm yeah. gonna go. I'm gonna go with Utah State. <laughs> Plus, how can we not go against the former home of uh, Craig Smith? There you go. I'm doing it. Wow. I got the horn You'll frogs. Do it. Is 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 I'm doing it? Their current coach, the one that replaced Craig Smith, or was there a guy in between? Uh, Utah State. Yeah, because Craig then went from Utah State to Utah. Utah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see here. Utah Craig Smith, State. obviously former Nebraska assistant coach. For uh, those no, out yeah, there. they had they got Ryan Odom. They, had, they the did. UMBC head That's right. They at did Utah State for a couple of years. Ryan right. Odom right now is not there. He's at uh, VCU. That's right. You went to VCU. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. After Mike wrote. Yep. Um. Yeah, I have TCU beating. Utah State, they, they've got a lot of good guards. Uh, any one of them yeah. can go off. I'm a big fan of Ernest Uday Jr. as well. Moving down the bracket, Gonzaga and McNeese State. Give I've easy. got American Gangster Will yes. Wade. Yeah, Gonzaga yeah, is no. playing better. They're a little resurgent. Yeah. But man, McNeese's Dude. profile screams giant killer. It does. And Will Wade, I was reading an athletic from the art or athletic, an article from the athletic earlier this week. Will Wade has one of he the list of he has such a high winning percentage that he's on a list of of names for highest winning percentage uh, with like Tom Izzo, Tony Bennett, I mean perennial NCAA tournament appearance type of coaches and he's 41 years old. All those yeah. guys are above 61. Mm -hmm. And so like you look or excuse me not Tony Bennett but Tom Izzo is above 61 yeah. obviously. You look at Will Wade in whatever he did at LSU, he won, but here he is at McNeese as a 12 seed. I have I have McNeese winning uh, against Gonzaga as well. I'm gonna go with Gonzaga here. I guess I'm the unpopular pick here, but uh, Ryan Emhart leading the leading the Zags. That's uh, right, former former, former, former Creighton. Creighton. Yep, point guard. So I I'll go with I'll That's go right. with them. Uh, and uh, yeah, we'll see. I know you don't favor Kansas in this in this Rock bracket. Rock chalk so we'll or see. Buckyball mm. in the 413. Kansas without Kevin McCuller. Yeah, Hunter Dickinson taking some shots at him as a press conference. My shoulders good enough to to play with my teammates. Dang. Okay, Hunter, do you? Bucky Ball. Bucky McMillan, the head coach at Sanford. Yeah. They press more than anyone in the country. They shoot a lot of threes. It is either going to go extremely well or extremely poorly for them. I picked Sanford in one bracket, but Kansas in most of them. I think Kansas survives this round. Go ahead, Buck. Yeah, I do, too. I think, uh, you know, Hunter Dickinson uh, return is huge. Um, Kansas with, with McElroy, I think, would be – a contender in this tournament without them. They've lost four or five. Of course, a lot of that was without Dickinson. Um, so, I mean, I think they can get, get back into it, but it's going to be a tough run for Kansas to make a long run uh, in the Midwest region. Yeah, I, man, it, it seems like there's, there's certainly a path for Samford to get the upset, right? But I think there's also something to be said about being here and coaches and Bill Self is as good of a coach as they come, right? So, yeah. Um, one of the highest paid in, in the entire country, a little over $9.6 million a year for Kansas head coach Bill Self. Um, I think they get past Sanford in, in game one. I don't think they get past the, the next round, though. Bottom half of the bracket in the first round, we start with South Carolina and your Pac-12 tournament champion, Oregon. Lamont Paris at South Carolina was a guy that was rumored to be in the running for the Ohio State job and a couple others. They're a six seed Oregon, the 11 after winning the Pac-12 tournament. I'm going with the Ducks. I think it's going to be South Carolina's toughness versus Oregon's athleticism. But again, to Nick's point, Dana's been there before. Dana Altman, head coach of Oregon. Yeah. I think that's enough of an advantage to squeeze Oregon through to the next round. Yeah, I, I think I, I mean, I think that South Carolina matches up well and could make a run too. And that's why I've been nervous making this pick all along. But I, I go with my heart on this. So I can't, I can't help it. I want to see Dana Altman against uh, against Creighton in the second round. So that's what I'll pick. But I wouldn't be surprised to see South Carolina not only beat Oregon but also beat Creighton and move to the Sweet Sixteen either. I'm going to actually take South Carolina. Okay. So, so South Carolina's won five of their last six. I was reading a little bit about this. Five of their last six, a 15-win improvement 
from year one to year two under Lamont Paris. Had 11 wins in year one under under Coach Paris, 26 this year. They, they, got, they got beat badly by Auburn in the SEC tournament. Auburn, I think, is really, really good, guys. And so um, I, I, I'm going to go w- with South Carolina to win this one tomorrow. Just um, because of Scott Wingo, right? Yeah, just because of the, the, the old SEC baseball days with uh, South Carolina. Christian Walker, Joey Pancake, Scott Wingo. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. We can still make this pick for another 30 seconds. Um, Creighton or Akron? <laughs> Creighton. Creighton up it was 17 Creighton. with 25 seconds left. I think I'll go with Creighton. Yeah, Creighton. Imagine <laughs> Akron pulls it off and the city of Lincoln rejoices. Um, yeah, I right. do have Creighton moving on. Bottom of the bottom of the right, Texas and Colorado State won the play-in game over Virginia. Are we taking the Rams or the Longhorns? See, Colorado State's a popular pick here, I think, as far as upsets go. Uh, Max Abrams in, in Texas, a pretty darn good team, though. Um, you know, I, I think I've said Colorado State earlier, so I better stick with them. But it's one of those <laughs> coin flip games, too. I mean, there's there, there's so many in this first round that are just they're, they're tough to pick, and that's why they're set up that way. But, um yeah, I, I guess I'll go with Colorado State here, but it, it's kind of the same thing with, with South Carolina where Texas could make a run if they can get by this initial matchup. I like Texas. I, I like, like I like the future Rick Barnes matchup. Ooh, yeah, yeah, that too. Barnes yeah. Bowl? Okay. Yeah. Isaiah Stevens is the best player in that game. He takes over. Mm, Colorado yeah. State. Wow. Um, anyone taking St. Peter's no. for a second time in a 2-15? No. <laughs> no. Dalton Connect. How about that? Dalton Connect. Uh, where was he previously, guys? Any any question? Any uh he said Juco in like Northern Colorado State. It was, it was just Northern Colorado. Northern Colorado. Just oh, Northern nice. Colorado. Yeah. Dalton Connect was at Northern Colorado. And so uh, here he is um, facing Moorhead? off. I, I, I Moorhead? Think, I think Tennessee. Nine wow. Nothing. Nine, Nine nothing, nothing more. This is, this, is, this is what Illinois does. Ohio State, Nebraska would tell you the same thing. This is what <laughs> Illinois does. They allow you to get on top by, by double-digit points. And then Terrence Shannon Jr. is going to keep the ball in his hands and <laughs> get 45, get free, 45 throws. free throws in, in 18 <laughs> minutes of game time. Damask just playing bully ball down the lane, doesn't get, get it, it to fall. Um, okay, so Tennessee versus. Gosh, I'm going to be so. Okay, Tennessee, I'm Texas. sorry. Here's your I, pick. I have to ask. Okay. Or not ask. I have to say, I cannot wait until Terrence Shannon Jr. is in the NBA. Because, not I'm because of. Not, yeah, not because of what he's going to do in the NBA just so he's out of the big 10 <laughs> that dude. Well, he is. Perfect. I mean, he is so good. He is, yeah. he is, he is so many uh, pieces of his game. He has, he's tied for the most made three pointers by an opponent at Pinnacle bank arena in there in the PBA's history mm-hmm. with uh, his performance last year in a game where Illinois came into Lincoln and won. I mean, he, he causes Nebraska issues. He is like the Caitlin Clark of, men's basketball when it comes to playing Nebraska. Caitlin drops 30 every single time she plays Nebraska, except for the game that obviously Nebraska won and they stopped going to Caitlin Clark in the fourth quarter. They benched but her. They did. Uh, <laughs> they took the ball out of her hands. But ta- that's what Terrence Shannon Jr. feels like for Nebraska. He just always finds ways to take over a game when Nebraska plays off plays against Illinois. I'm getting a call from Corvallis. I might need to take this, but I'm not going to do it. I'm, I'm moving on. Um, Bach, we'll start with you. Uh, because you and I both have Tennessee and Colorado State. Volunteers or Rams in the round of 32? Uh, I, you might notice I'm getting awfully chalky here, but I'll go with Tennessee. Okay, Nick, Rick Barnes Bowl is what you predicted. I, I, I like Tennessee. Okay, I've got Tennessee moving on. Creighton officially does beat Akron 77 yeah. to 60. And then uh, I, I think you and I, Buck, have the Dana Bowl. So, Nick, since you're the outlier again, we'll start with you. South Carolina or Creighton, Creighton. in the round of 32? Creighton in a heartbeat. Okay. Yeah, Buck? Yeah, I think I think Creighton will take uh, take down Oregon, but that'd be a, that'll be a fascinating matchup. And, and Creighton again, they've they've just got the pieces to make a run. They need one or two more bench players would really help, but uh, we'll see what happens. I like Creighton I, on that one. I want to make sure I say this correctly. Uh, Baylor Shireman today in their win became the only Division One men's basketball player ever to accomplish a feat. That includes it's like a two thousand, one thousand, five hundred, and three hundred type threes. of statistic. Um, wow. I- I- incredible. The guy from Aurora, Nebraska, uh, is, is the only division one men's basketball player to ever do that. Um, had an incredible career, obviously at South Dakota state continued that on, on the way down here to Creighton. All right. I've got Creighton moving on as well. Top half of the bracket. I've got will Wade into the sweet 16. I've got wow, McNeese go. over Kansas. And I feel really good about that. I do too. I feel the exact same way. Well, I'm going to go with Gonzaga over Kansas, but none of us <laughs> okay. believe in, in Kansas. Beat up Kansas right now. 
here's my other spicy pick at the top of the bracket. TCU, Ooh, the Horn Frogs wow. take down Purdue in the round of 32. I love the different scoring options at the guard position for TCU. This is where I think Purdue wow. bows out. Wow. wow. I, I'm going to take Purdue. I, I, I think I think Zach Eadie's part of it, obviously. Um, but also, we always talk about Fletcher Lawyer. We always talk about Braden um, Smith. Yeah, Braden Smith, obviously. I think Gillis is a, is a big mm. piece of, of a Purdue potential run, right? Because uh, we saw him. He was able to hit the three ball really successfully in Lincoln uh, when Nebraska was able to knock off number one Purdue. But I think Gillis... Uh, when when Braden Smith went down in the Big Ten tournament, Gillis stepped up. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think I think I'm going to take Purdue in that one to to advance. Yeah, I like the Boilermakers as well. All right, on to the Sweet 16. I've got TCU continuing its run uh, with a win over McNeese State. I've also got Creighton taking down Tennessee to make it to the Elite Eight again. Bach, your two Sweet 16 games in the Midwest go how? Yeah, I think eventually we're going to end up with uh, with Purdue and, and beating Gonzaga, and then I've got uh, Creighton over Tennessee to match up with Purdue and, and, and Tennessee there. Or excuse me, Purdue and Creighton in the Elite Eight. Yeah, I have Purdue and Creighton moving on. Creighton and TCU is my Elite yeah. Eight mm. matchup. That's so wild to think about. Creighton on the verge last year yeah. of the Final Four appearance, the first one in school history. It pains me, but I think – Creighton having the depth that it does, the offensive ceiling that it does, and playing enough defense, it breaks my heart to say I've got Creighton in this Final Four. Yeah, yeah. I do too. I think a lot of – I mean, it, it, it's three Nebraska fans right there all picking Creighton to the Final Four. You can just see, you can just see I mean, we've seen it up close and personal. This is a team that has all the pieces. doesn't necessarily always mean that the, the team can get there, but uh, this, this feels like Creighton's best chance. Yeah, I, I can't lie. I didn't pick Creighton in every bracket, but this the one I'm going off of is my official 93-7, the ticket entrance. So mm. that's what I feel obligated to to go off of. How many right brackets now. did you do? Um, I did one with my family, one for the ticket, and then I had two that were just like throwaway pools that aren't open anymore. So yeah. I just filled those out just for well, fun to go. I, I, I can see that you picked the wrong national champion. So we'll we'll get to that in a little bit. So half of our final four is set. I've got Houston and Creighton coming out of the right yeah. side. Bach, you have? Uh, I've got I like three seats. I got Kentucky and Creighton. Okay, and then Nick? Marquette and Creighton. There it is. We'll take a break here during On the Block. <laughs> when we get back, we will uh, have a shorter segment here. We'll talk a little Nebraska-Texas A&M, yeah. and then we'll get into the left side of the bracket. The East and the West coming up at three. Give us your final four picks in the South region and the Midwest region. Let us know, 402-464-5685. We'll wrap up Power One of On the Block live from Buffalo Wings and Rings next. You're listening to coverage of the NCAA tournament live from Buffalo Wings and Rings at 68th and 0 on 937 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Constructors is now hiring for all positions with laborers starting at $23 and up based on experience. Constructors has immediate job openings for laborers, mechanics, bridge builders, operators, and drivers. Start your new career today. Constructors offers great pay, health, dental, and vision insurance, paid time off, paid holidays, and so much more. Join the crew today and be a part of Nebraska's oldest paving company dating back to 1908. For a complete list of openings and to apply online, visit ConstructorsLincoln.com. Houses? They're expensive. And once you buy one, you're kind of stuck with it for a while. You need to make sure you get your best house for the best price. You need Ben Bleicher and his team of pros at Professional Realty Group. They'll take the time to figure out what's important for you in your dream home, and they have the expertise to find the hidden issues that could surprise you after the sale. That's professional knowledge, proactive service. We call that potential. Ben Bleicher and the team at Professional Realty Group of Berkshire Hathaway's Home Service Ambassador. Find more online at prg-ne.com. For over 15 years, Integrated Life Choices has empowered individuals with disabilities in Lincoln and throughout Nebraska. They provide comprehensive services from group homes and independent living services to job training, ensuring fulfilling lives for those that they serve. Now, they're inviting you to join their mission. If you are passionate about making a difference in the lives of people with developmental disabilities, explore rewarding career opportunities with them. Learn more about their services and apply today at www.ilc.net. Be a part of Integrated Life Choices, where your work truly changes lives. Rico here with HIS Auto Care at 70th and Van Dorn, letting you know HIS is a great place to bring your vehicle for service. With superior service bumper to bumper, 
will treat your vehicle like it's your mother's. Doesn't get any better than that. So call 402-488-8934 and HIS Auto will make you glad you did. 5% off, mention this ad, and for sure your mother will be proud you called. 402-488-8934, HIS Auto Care, 7th and Van Doren. God bless you. Stop by TCA Outdoor Power on March 22nd and 23rd for an open house and customer appreciation celebration. TCA Outdoor Power is a locally owned business located at 6210 South 57th Street and prides itself on being Lincoln's only elite steel dealership for over 20 years. On March 22nd and 23rd, enjoy 10% off select steel products and up to $350 off on select battery tools. Also, if you buy two steel batteries, you can double your limited warranty. Give TCA Outdoor Power a call today at 402-420-9424 or visit them for their open house celebration March 22nd and 23rd. At Union Bank, people don't have your money. Your money has people. First home people, investment people, people people, people who answer the phone and your chats, dream car people, dream retirement people, driving your dream car in your dream retirement people, small business people, credit card people, and all the other people you need. At Union Bank, our people help you do more than you dreamed possible. So stop in and say hello. We can't wait to see you. Union Bank and Trust, member FDIC. Forget the lame excuse this year. Your boss already knows why you can't make it to work for those magical two days in mid-March. Join 93.7 The Ticket on Thursday and Friday, March 21st and 22nd at Buffalo Wings and Rings at 68th and O for March Mayhem. Come early on Thursday and get a ping pong ball with a lucky team on it and stay all day for prizes throughout and buzzer beater upsets. It's March Mayhem with 93.7 The Ticket for the NCAA Tournament at Buffalo Wings and Rings, 68th and O. Shopping for new flooring is different today. Getting your questions answered, making the right selection, getting the best value, and install quickly and professionally. Visit OStreetCarpet.com or shop our store. We'll answer all your questions and help you make the right choice. You'll be enjoying your new floor at just days for less than you'd pay elsewhere. Carpet, vinyl, wood, laminate, tile, and area rugs. We've got it all. O Street Carpet. 1732 O Street. Family owned and operated. Always the best value. It's getting nicer outside, but it's still hit or miss in the spring on golf weather. Not at Double Eagle Golf. You're home for always 72 degree weather and no wind. Book a bay with some friends for a weekend or come by for golf and happy hour on a weekday. Spring leagues are underway, but stay tuned for info on indoor golf tournaments and book your bay for the Masters in April. That's all at Double Eagle Golf inside the Kinetic Sports Complex on West O Street. Online at DoubleEagle.Golf. My dream was to work in commercial banking, but it required a college degree and I didn't have one. I found out that Doan had classes for adult learners on the Lincoln campus and online. So I earned my bachelor's degree and five months later, I landed my dream job. I decided to continue my education and now I'm working on my MBA at Doan. For me, the Doan experience has been life-changing. Your home is your empire. Protect it with Empire Fence. Get a free instant quote with the online estimating tool at empire-fence.com. See an upfront estimate with no hidden fees. An Empire Fence can provide privacy and improve the appearance of your home. Keep kids and pets in or out of your yard. Increase security and add value to your property. Visit empire-fence.com now to view the stylish and maintenance-free possibilities for your home and get a free instant online quote. Let Empire Fence protect your empire. You're listening to coverage of the NCAA Tournament live from Buffalo Wings and Rings at 68th and O on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Now back to On the Block with Strick and Austin on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Back one final time in hour one of On the Block, live from Buffalo Wings and Rings. Big thanks to Nebco for sponsoring the show. Big thanks to Buffalo Wings and Rings for having us out here today. And tomorrow, we are here again tomorrow yep. starting at 10. And then I know there's basketball on this weekend. we got some other plans, courtesy of TCA Power and Outdoor. Right? Well, yeah. So, so by the way, to, tomorrow, March 22nd and 23rd, TCA Outdoor Power is having their open house and customer celebration. 
as uh, this Friday and Saturday, TCA Outdoor Power, Lincoln's only elite steel dealership, been in business for over 20 years. This Friday and Saturday only, enjoy 10% off select steel products and up to $350 off select battery tools. If you buy two steel batteries, you can double your limited warranty, but you have to purchase that battery either Thursday, or excuse me, this Friday or Saturday. Once again, that's TCA Outdoor Power, just south of 56 and Old Cheney. Um, and, and they're having their, their bit locally owned business. Make sure you head on out there as we get ready for the season of cutting grass, of edging yards, of, of landscaping. Make sure you get all your tools out there. There we go. Tomorrow and Saturday, TCA Power and Outdoor. Let's ask this question real quick. I asked Rico before. I don't think you were on, Bach. I think it was just me and Rico. But with you guys here, too, it's, it's, it's a worthwhile conversation to have. We are about 27 hours away if I can do my math correctly, 26 hours away <laughs> from tip off between Nebraska and Texas A&M is Texas A&M's experience in the NCAA tournament, a difference maker, or does Fred Hoiberg having coached in four NCAA tournaments at Iowa state negate Texas A&M's postseason experience advantage? Uh, well, I think it helps to have Fred there, but again, he's not going to be on the court. I think it, so it helps, but I don't think you can quite like, there's certain things you just can't replicate. Right. I mean, we talk about that when any time you're trying to, replicate Memorial stadium in a practice and anybody's trying to face Nebraska, you put some music on, you know, but it's just hard outside of the real deal. So, I mean, I think if you're talking about advantage, I don't know how much of an advantage it would be, but a little bit more comfort probably uh, from A&M as that, as that ball tips off, but you know, it's a new year, new opportunity. And, 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 and for every, whether you've had experience or not, if you don't win that game, you're going home. So uh, again, I think that there's probably a little bit to that, but I, I, I don't, I don't factor that in too much going into the game for Nebraska. Yeah, I think, I think, I mean, to box point, the, and we talked about this yesterday a little bit too, Austin on the crossover was Nebraska. They have some experienced basketball players, right? Maybe not on tomorrow's stage, but a lot of guys that have played some basketball, CJ Wilcher has had plenty of basketball experience throughout his years in college. Bryce Williams, maybe not at this level, but a lot of basketball experience. I think, I think, there's going to be some nerves. I, I think, I think that's to be expected. It's, but as we know, can Nebraska just hit the shots? Is Nebraska a team that needs that spark of emotion and energy of being on a new stage or is Nebraska a team that you oh, think man. needs to tone it down and not get caught up in the moment? Because to me, I think this team occasionally lacks an edge on defense and they haven't shown a lot of stretches where they've been erratic. So I think a little boost of energy from an NCAA tournament, the lights being a little bigger, a little mm -hmm. bit brighter, might benefit Nebraska as a little kick in the pants as opposed to being a young team that gets too excited out ahead of its skis. I would say that uh, throughout multiple years, we, we've always talked about whether it's basketball, football, baseball, it, you take on the, the mentality of your coach, I think, a little bit. And so to what you just said a couple of minutes ago, Fred Hoiberg at his time at Iowa State, maybe that – is where it comes into play a little bit more as they take on the way that Fred Hoiberg's approach is, right? So I think we don't expect Fred to really get caught up in, in all of this, I think, Fred Hoiberg. Um, and, and so I think I would hope, honestly, that Nebraska kind of operates that way. Um, it's, it's such a cliche to say business as usual. And maybe it's a little naive for us to sit here and say Nebraska, understanding the, the history or lack thereof, understanding the, uh, the the struggles in, in recent years, most notably and most recently 10 years ago on this stage when they had a really disappointing performance. Like, I understand this is a completely new team, completely different looking program. It was a really disappointing performance 10 years ago when they stepped on the floor against Baylor. I think this team is a little bit better. I think it's a little more st stable. I think, it's, I think this team, team is a lot more stable. They have more of a fundamentally winning team than they maybe had a couple of years or 10 years ago when they played against the Baylor bears, which gives me added excitement and I guess optimism for tomorrow. I think what I'm going to look, be looking out for is, you know, I, I, we're not the only ones that have probably noticed uh, the excitement and in, in, in uproar over case and, and seeing if he can be kind of that next sparkle uh, in the NCAA tournament case. I mean, part of the reason he came to America and I mean, this is the moment, right? I mean, this is all kind of what they've been building up for. We've also seen, he fences and teams keep Casey out, or maybe he's just not shooting that well. And he's able to, okay, understand that play his game, or maybe not, maybe not, maybe, you know, somebody else is playing well and he takes a little bit more of a reserve role. Um, 
I'm interested to see if that at all could, could play in the stretch. Now, hopefully, yeah. we all hope that, that K-State just goes out there and starts lighting it up because the then the building will get behind him. Um, and, and, you know, and you'll even the, a, even the casual fans. Right, yeah. Sorry yeah. to interrupt you. Yeah. Like, we talk so much about the Nebraska fans that are going to travel, and there's going to be a large contingent. I can't wait until tonight when we see the, the videos on social media and when we hear and see posts from Jake and Strick from down there in Memphis. It might take them a little bit longer to get there than we, we expected, <laughs> but um, we, we're going to get to see those posts. It's going to have that same feel to like Ireland, right? Yeah. Where it was like, holy cow, all these Husker fans made the, the pilgrimage, the trip to where Nebraska was playing. It's not surprising anymore, but it still kind of catches you off guard and excites you, gets you pumped up, gets the juices flowing for, for the game to come. I'm pumped for that for Nebraska fans. If case they can do that. But then you want to talk about there's, I mean, Husker fans. I'm going to session one. I'm going to just hang out there for four yeah. games all day long. What about those people that have no true investment in Nebraska specific program, but they love watching exciting players, and that's the definition of KSA. But that, I mean, I think it could get you into a little bit of trouble if it's you know if it's like saying <laughs> logo, got, yeah, logo three, yeah, he, just, you know, he hits he's, three, he's not he's stopping. Check. Um, <laughs> but you know, there is a possible. I mean, we, again, we've seen games where he shoots like two for six from beyond the arc or. You know, something like that. And and is he is the, is his mindset that he's going to be the one that leads Nebraska to the victory? Or can he, you know, this is ultimately, I hope they hope the same thing, is that they can win six games here and understand it's a long journey. Not there every go. game is going to be your game. So I'm not telling K-State to tone it down, but if he starts 0 for 3 from beyond the arc, maybe, you know, look for the better shot. Games in progress right now. Moorhead State up a bucket on Illinois, 24 to 21, approaching the UA to the first half. Carolina's on upset alert. They're in danger. Only up a dozen on Wagner. <laughs> Arizona Wagner, State one of the worst offensive Beach teams State, in the country. 78 to 53. <laughs> danger zone is the danger zone. If you're here with us at Buffalo Wings and Rings, we'll take your attention up here, give some raffle prizes yes. away here in just a sec. If you're not here at Buffalo Wings and Rings, that's okay. There's still a whole no, afternoon not. and evening of basketball okay, well, for you to get, yeah, you here, get here. Yeah. Get off of work. <laughs> still plenty of raffle tickets to give away. We're uh, here till six. Come see us. My, come say hi. We've got hour two of On the Block in just a sec. You're listening to coverage of the NCAA tournament live from Buffalo Wings and Rings at 68th and O on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. NIPCO is hiring CDL drivers for Ready Mixed Concrete, Husker Concrete, and Beatrice Concrete. NEPCO offers great pay, medical and retirement benefits, paid time off, and they pay for CDL training. Apply today and start your new career with a $2,500 hiring bonus. From NEPCO's beginning in 1908, it's the employees that have formed the company's solid foundation. Start your career today. Visit NEPCOinc.com. That's N-E-B-C-O-I-N-C.com. My dream was to work in commercial banking, but it required a college degree and I didn't have one. I found out that Doan had classes for adult learners on the Lincoln campus and online. So I earned my bachelor's degree and five months later, I landed my dream job. I decided to continue my education and now I'm working on my MBA at Doan. For me, the Doan experience has been life-changing. Hello? Hello? Believe it or not, old phones are one of the most common pain points in offices today. Many of these phones are beyond repair because parts aren't available to fix outdated devices. Whether it's a traditional phone system or cloud-based VOIP technology, Hamilton Business Phones can help upgrade your connection. We make it easy to sync your office phone with yourself for seamless call handling, no matter where you work. If your current office phone can't do this, you deserve better. Hire your local experts. Hire Hamilton at hamiltonisbusiness.com. This 
is Monster Jam. Witness big air, two wheel skills, backflips, and all out racing. It's the only place to see the world's best drivers tear up the dirt in your favorite Monster Jam trucks like Grave Digger, El Toro Loco, Megalodon, and more. It's big time fun for the whole family. Monster Jam, as big as it gets. Coming to Pinnacle Back Arena March 29th and 30th. Brought to you by Big 80 Tires, Great Clips, and the original Super Glue. Ready to upgrade your combine in 2024? The team at Landmark Implement is here to help you find the right combine to fit your operations needs. Choose from 4.9% for up to 60 months or a 12-month interest waiver, followed by John Deere financial rates with approved credit through the end of March. When you purchase a pre-owned S or X series combine from Landmark, know you are backed by Landmark's extensive parts and service network with mobile techs and parts drop-off points to keep you up and running. View our current inventory online at LandmarkImp.com or stop by your local Landmark to experience the Landmark difference. Old School with DP and J. Do you think it's too early to talk about Patrick Mahomes as the greatest of all time? You know, to be honest with you, I think you might be on ahead of the pace. It would definitely on, on pace, maybe ahead of the pace. I think right now everything that he does is going to get over overblown. And I think people <laughs> so quickly forgot the 20-year run of the Patriots. Not five, six years. 20-year run of Tom Brady and the Patriots. On 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Early break with Sip and Jake. We do not go quietly in the night on early break. Um, we don't, and we won't. <laughs> Is that our motto now? A- <laughs> Is that our new show motto? Look at that. <laughs> we let you have that moment. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We won't. We won't. We we don't. We and, and we, we won't. won't. <laughs> <laughs> we it's our new one. Yeah, I'm getting a t-shirt. I want to. We don't go quietly in the yeah, night. We voice place. early break with Sip and Jake from six to eight every weekday morning on 93.7 The Ticket. You're listening to coverage of the NCAA tournament live from Buffalo Wings and Rings at 68th and 0 on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. This is On the Block with Strick and Austin. Nebraska Basketball Hall of Famer and nine-year NBA vet, Eric Strickland. Strickland for three! And you're going to go out of here as the Big 8 tournament champion middle school basketball coaching legend and Duke basketball shooting coach in his mind, Austin Orman. Coming at you live from the heart of Lincoln, America, on air and online at theticketfm.com. Presented by Nipco. This is On the Block with Strick and Austin. Come here during On the Block with you for another hour before we get to Old School with DP and Jay. Three more hours of us out here, live radio coverage of what we're calling March Mayhem. Of course, March Madness, the NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament. Back and forth. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, Moorhead you. State in Illinois, 27 to 26. Yeah. Coleman Hawkins, five points. Terrence Shannon Jr., of course, has been the story uh, for the final line on the offensive end. Let's dive back into... The bracket. Let's go. Uh, first thing, Nebco, of course, N E B C O I N C, Nebco Inc.com. If you're looking to start your new career today, and don't forget, we are at Buffalo Wings and Rings on 68. And okay, to the top left of the bracket, the Yukon region, number one overall seed, Yukon. They draw Stetson in round yeah. one. The Hatters, who uh, went on a good run through their conference tournament, Omaha. We had Chris Crutchfield on the show yesterday. Omaha beat them at Baxter yeah. Arena. UConn has looked like a pretty strong team all year. Metrics love them. I feel like they're pretty safe from a 116 shenanigans. I, I, w- I would 100% agree with you there. That's not, not much to say about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. UConn, there's a reason they come in one of the favorites uh, to, to win this whole thing. They've, they've proven themselves all year long, not just in the Big East, but in non-con play. Obviously coming off a national championship as well. Uh, big, big, big task in, in, in front of Stetson there. 
one of the games that I've gone back and forth on for the last couple of days, Florida Atlantic in Northwestern. FAU picked in the preseason top 10 most places, top five somewhere else, return all but one starter from last year's team. And they rated out as a, a top 25 team basically all year. Maybe not as elite this year as they were last year. Played a tougher schedule, got some really good wins, played some tougher teams that they lost to as well. They get an eight seat in Northwestern ends up behind Nebraska in terms of seeding the Wildcats down Ty Berry. Brooks Barnheiser in and out of the lineup a little bit, but they've been solid all year. Bach, we'll start with you. Are they taking, are you taking last year's darling to start a run again this year in FAU or solid steady as she goes Northwestern? Well, you talk about a good matchup just from the teams on the court, but how about the matchup with Johnny Davis and Boo Booey uh, from the point guard position? That is going to be wonderful. I just do, I do wish Northwestern was a little bit uh, in better shape. Ty Berry out. Um, that, that really kind of brings them back. And, and you know, they did a, a pretty good job post his – uh, his presence of uh, uh, the absence of his presence, I should say, due to his injury, but it seemed to kind of catch up to him uh, toward the end, and so that's where I, I probably think FAU is going to get the win here. Owls or cats, Nick? I, man, I I still think Northwestern. I still mm. think Northwestern. A big part is Boo Booey. Boo Booey. Yeah. I I just think I I just think Boo Booey is. We talk so much about guard play, and you said it, John Davis. I get it, but um, I, Northwestern has also. They're they're. It's not like they're an outlier to this thing anymore. They they've had success the last couple of years. They they've been on that stage before. So it's not like in years past. And I understand the run that FAU made last year. Don't forget FAU started as a top 10 school, top 10 team in the country this year. Maybe that was a little facetious and, 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 you know, you know, aggressive, I guess of a, of a starting ranking, but they're here. There are as an eight seed. This is a team. This is a program that I think expected a lot more from themselves maybe this year than what they've gotten so far. Um, and I think their season, their NCAA tournament run this time comes to an end a lot sooner than maybe it did last year. 5-12 matchup in the East. San Diego State made the national championship game last year, took down Florida Atlantic, but lost to UConn. They get UAB. Anyone have a 12 over 5 or are we on the Tex? Nope, we're on Texas Tech. I actually do. I think UAB's Ooh. won five in a row. I think San wow. Diego Andy State. Kennedy. Yeah, it's, it's one of those deals, too, where – I don't know. Usually, I, it, you just got to pick your upsets here and there. And it's not like the NFL, where one of the teams from the Super Bowl won't go back to the playoffs. But San Diego State had such a magic run last year. I don't know if the magic is going to stick with them. Well, speaking of upsets, we can't pick. I'm going to take, obviously, Texas Tech. Um, speaking Aztecs. of, or excuse me, San Diego State. Yes, not Texas Tech. Uh, <laughs> Texas, or we'll take San Diego State. However, speaking of upsets, we can't pick the 6-11 game on this bracket because it already happened with Duquesne knocking off BYU. Mm-hmm. How about this statistic? Since 2010, 11 seeds are 28 and 25 against six seeds oh boy. in the NCAA tournament. How about that statistic? There Since 2010, 11 seeds are 28 and 25 against six seeds in the opening round. Did y'all pick Duquesne or BYU? I picked BYU. I, I even though we saw Duquesne earlier in the year, I thought BYU was going to be able to get them. Um, mm-hmm. And and give credit to Duquesne, they they jumped out to a nice start. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a good good victory. I, I can't say that I picked it, and so I'm with many whose bracket's already <laughs> busted. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. And, and, may, and, again, as we watch this Illinois-Moorhead State game play out, it, it kind of brings further intrigue to the expected Brad Underwood um, uh, the shortcoming in the NCAA tournament. Now they're going to get at least, you know, to the Sweet 16. They've got two double-digit seeds on the way there. This has got to be the year they take advantage. How about this in the 413 game? Auburn, your SEC tournament championship against Yale, who won the Ivy League. Yale has been in the NCAA tournament somewhat consistently. Last year's Ivy League team, yeah. Princeton, made the run to the Sweet 16, knocked off uh, the Wildcats of Arizona and the Missouri Tigers. Yale has been a trendy upset pick. I'm not buying it. I am on Auburn for this game. Yeah, I like Auburn too. I mean, I, like you said, they're the SEC. Uh, has a pretty good argument as, as one of the at least the most top heavy uh, te- leagues in the in the in the in the nation this year, and for them to come out of that again, it doesn't always translate to success. Um, but Auburn is is a heck of a team. I think it's going to be tough for Yale to get over. Yeah, I like Auburn too. They've passed a lot of tests this year, right? They've knocked off Florida a couple of times, most notably in, or most recently in the SEC tournament championship game. Um, but they've also knocked off a lot of top ten or excuse me ranked opponents as well, and convincingly so. This is a team that put up 101 points against South Carolina earlier in the year. 
This is a team that that comfortably beat Kentucky as well. Um, and so I think Auburn, this, this might be one of Auburn's best teams in recent memory under Bruce Pearl. We've got a uh, tip off between Oregon and South Carolina. We think we already yeah, we picked that game before. I, I, uh, I know Carolina Wagner in progress and Illinois is the next game uh, on our list to pick here. They're up five on Moorhead state approaching the U four in the first half. Uh, I picked Illinois. Did you guys go with Moorhead? I, I picked Illinois. How about this though? There's still four minutes, four and a half minutes in the first half there. And any guesses on how many points Terrence Shannon Jr. has? 23. 19. Oh, wow. Guy has 19 points in, what is that? 16 minutes. 16 minutes of game time. So Terrence Shannon Jr., he had he had over 100 points in three games in the Big Ten tournament. Shot 34 of 44, I believe, from the field. Did Terrence Shannon Jr. in the Big Ten tournament? insane numbers and he's looking to continue that at least through the first round but he, give credit to Moorhead State still game just down by three despite an 11-2 run for Illinois here that game being played in Omaha the other two games in Omaha might be some of my favorites of the entire tournament let's yep. start with the 7-10 matchup yeah, between Washington State storybook kind of Cinderella run for them to second in the conference in the final year of the Pac-12 and Drake, we've been on the Darian DeVries train, the Tucker DeVries train. Yeah. Drake and Bradley have really gone back and forth at the top of the, the Missouri Valley for a couple years. Drake had Miami on the ropes a little bit early before the Canes pulled away last year and went on a nice run. Bach, we'll start with you. Washington State and Drake in Omaha. Yeah, like, like, I mean, and we saw Drake, uh, I think all of us did see Drake up and close and personal when they beat Mississippi State in the top 25 upset last year in Pinnacle Bank Arena. That might sound strange, but that happened. Uh, and uh, <laughs> But it did happen. So, uh, yeah, I, I, and, and been following them along. Uh, Tucker DeVries is a guy that um, really, really interested to see. You know, he could make himself, make himself a household name kind of a Midwest name right now, but like a household name across the country. Um, maybe uh, here by the end of the weekend, if they could knock off Iowa state, Washington state's a tough matchup though. I mean, that's uh, I mean, these are, these are two, some pretty good teams. Obviously you expect out of the seven ten matchup. Um, I have Drake, uh, but I will admit part of that is just more of a want than, <laughs> than a prediction is because I, I want to see that team and they've got some of the pieces around Tucker too, uh, to make this work. So um, I think I just, I really want to see uh, Drake match up with Iowa state uh, coming up in the second round. So that's where I'm, that's where I'm leaning. I, I have, I have Drake winning just because I think that I honestly, if I were to, I, I think they're the third best team in Omaha this weekend um, behind, behind Iowa state and, and Illinois. I, I think Drake is somebody, I truly believe that Drake and Indiana state both deserve to be in the field of 64 um, that Missouri Valley Conference is, is nothing just to kind of throw to the wayside. I, I think um, when you look at Drake for all the reasons you guys just said, there's some intrigue, you know, intriguing parts of it um, with, with the DeFries family. I also think, though, um, as I mentioned earlier with, with you and Strick, Austin, mm -hmm. I, I just really appreciate nowadays in the, in the era of college athletics that we're in, when people don't leave, I, I mean, like that's that's just the honest truth. Tucker DeFries could have gone to a lot of high D one schools, and and he chose to stay. Part of that, obviously, I'm sure with his dad, but I think there's also something to be said about the NBA. Will find you if you're good enough to be a part of it. The last matchup there in the East region again. UConn's the one, the two in that region. Iowa State made a late charge at a one seed as Big Twelve tournament champs in Hilton South. They get the Bunnies, the Jackrabbits of South Dakota State. No Mike Don, but they do have William Kyle Jr. Yeah, Chuck Hustle. I was gonna say, Charlie don't Easley. don't don't be leaving out my man Charlie. Man, I would absolutely <laughs> not do that. South Dakota State's good. South Dakota State's fun. Yeah. I just think too much Cyclones in that one. Yeah, I do too. I, I it's it's been it's been a lot of fun. Obviously, as somebody that graduated with with Charlie Easley as as he walks on to, I remember that entire that just a quick story here. I remember that entire kind of like lead up to Charlie eventually going to Nebraska. Like we were, I would have conversations and questions and ask what's going on. Cause that was in the midst of Nebraska's coaching change with right. Husker basketball. Mm -hmm. And I remember like there, obviously Charlie was, there was, there was a lot of schools that he passed up on so that he could try to pursue Nebraska. Mm -hmm. um, and he unfortunately just kind of got left out to dry for a little bit for an extended period of time, because there was a lot of other stuff obviously higher on, I'm sure, on the priority list for Fred Hoiberg, ends up going there, plays a little bit of a role on a bad 
Nebraska team in 2019 goes to South Dakota State where he's a much more uh, important piece of it. Much bigger factor is a really, really just fun player to watch in general. But unfortunately, I think uh, South Dakota State ends their season against uh, Iowa State tonight. Yeah, Iowa State, like you said, I mean, maybe the hottest team in the country are right up there with it. So, I mean, they're, they're, they're going to be a tough out at this point. I always will wonder, because the primary uh, assistants for uh, Coach Hoiberg at Iowa State included T.J. Osselberger, um, what would have happened if he was able to get him to campus? Maybe they would have been right. able to, to get something going a little yeah. bit earlier. His other primaries, obviously, were Matt Abdelmasi and Doc Sadler down there at Iowa State. Brought them up to, to Nebraska and didn't get anything working out there. But um, so, I mean, it, that's always going to be a wonder. Otzelberger's name is, has been rising over the last couple of years in the profession, and this could be the year he takes a, another big step in that. The other reason I'm picking Drake over Washington State is because I think flying across two time zones, Drake being close, will be an advantage, yeah. even though Washington State obviously got in with plenty of time. And then I would expect a 50 50 split at CHI Health Center for a potential Drake-Iowa State game. Mm. I would love to see 9,000 people yeah. in, in Cyclones colors and 9,000 people in Bulldogs colors. I think that would be one of the dream matchups, a regional type of game yep. in a, a non-regional setting for Iowa State and Drake. The numbers do not look pretty for teams like Iowa State, who start the year unranked, that climb into the top 10 and are ranked there in the final poll and then get a, a, a high seed, you think of Purdue and Marquette last year that happened to, where they, they weren't ranked, they climb into the top 10, both of those teams go out earlier than expected in the tournament. That's the history Iowa State is battling, Yeah, but I think they have just enough to get it done over Drake in a potential round of 32 matchups. Just don't forget what T.J. Otzenberger's done. Like, it, it's such a short of, I won't let you. <laughs> it's such a short <laughs> amount of time. I mean, it's been... It just just three years ago, they were two and twenty-two. Yeah, Iowa yeah. State was two and twenty-two, and I'm I'm just being comfortable. So three three years ago, T.J. Otzenberger comes uh, their way, and and it's quick turnaround in names. Former home of Michael Jacobson. That's right. Okay, Bob. So Washington <laughs> Indianapolis State. Colts tight end Michael yes. Jacobson. Amen. Iowa State and Washington State is your matchup, correct? I'm Iowa State and Drake. Either way, it doesn't Drake? matter. I think it very well could be Iowa State and Washington State. I got the Cyclones moving on. Moving up uh, the, the ladder here in the East region, uh, Illinois and now Duquesne. Can the Dukes make it to a Sweet 16 in their first NCAA tournament appearance in 47 years? No. That was I have Illinois. Thought. Yeah, just too much fire, fire from Illinois if they can get past Moorhead State here. Yeah. <laughs> hey, give credit to Moorhead State. Yeah. They're, they're down by four, but they're they're staying right with the scoring pace. It's not like Illinois isn't scoring. They got 40 points in the yeah. first half. Yep. With, and Terrence Shannon Jr. has got 20. Dang. I had BYU beating Illinois in the round of 32. Hmm. Obviously, that's not going to happen anymore. Yeah. I'm a bit bummed by that. As we move up, I believe we uh, – Bach, you took UAB. So we have UAB and Auburn. How do you see that one going? Well, I'll tell you guys a little secret. When I take a pick, a, an upset pick, I usually cover it for the next <laughs> round. And that's what I'm going to do here and have Auburn move on to the Sweet 16. Okay. Auburn. You got Auburn too? Yeah. Ooh, I have San Diego State. Mm. Oh, magical run two years in a row. Eh, Sweet 16 is hardly magical. San Diego State. Oh, it would be magical in Lincoln. <laughs> I mean, context matters. San Diego State has been incredibly consistent. They have won their fair share of first round games. They've made these you know, second weekend appearances before Auburn's good. I get it. They play in the sec. Some of their metrics though. I, I don't love not a great shooting team. They're kind of Texas A&M ish. Johnny mm. broom is a big man. That's really good. But I, I just think San Diego state, I give the intangible edge to, and I'm a big Brian Dutcher guy. So Bruce Pearl's good. I really like Brian Dutcher. Then top of the bracket. I have, UConn over Northwestern, and I don't think this one's close. If no. it gets there, yeah. I think it's UConn in cruise control in the last 10 minutes of the game. We talked about Northwestern's health or lack thereof. Um, Ty Berry obviously being one of those names. I, I don't care how good Boo Booey is. Um, I think UConn rolls in this one too. Yeah, UConn's just been tested again multiple times all year long against some of the top competition in the nation um, and hasn't faltered against this level of competition. So I, I, I personally have FAU, but whether it's FAU or Northwestern, UConn moves on to the Sweet 16. Okay, I'll let you guys start. Nick, we'll start with you. UConn and Auburn in the Sweet 16, the regional semifinal. Last year's defending champ, this year's SEC Conference Tournament champ. 
I have UConn. I just, once again, just tested. I, mean, I, I think the Big East is really good. I, and I think it's a, kind of a joke that they only got three teams in, too. Um, and I think, but I, I, I will say all three of those teams, I think, are going to heavily show out. Well, they have four uh, four teams losing the first round of the NIT. Maybe that's a little <laughs> bit of uh, frustration that they're there. But yeah, uh, that right. was kind of interesting. It's just like the SEC in football. If it's not a good enough bowl game, they didn't care. They, <laughs> they didn't, didn't want to be there. That's they right. Didn't they didn't want to be there. We don't care about the Outback Bowl. <laughs> well, at least they accept. now. Nowadays, <laughs> if you accept a bit of the NIT, we believe you want to be there because a lot of teams <laughs> don't. So, but then, but then they go back and go, "Well, we shouldn't have accepted it in the first place." Um, speaking of the NIT, real quick, did you guys see SMU fired their head coach after two years? So after two years, SMU fired their head coach. They're moving to the the ACC, obviously next year. SMU is, but they fired their head coach after two years. Twenty wins this season. They just lost to mm. Indiana State in the NIT last night. We just mentioned that we thought Indiana State should have been probably in the in the NCAA tournament. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so you lose that one. And now you fire a coach heading into the ACC. Man, after just two seasons, two, and now 20 wins this year, Wild. SMU Tough. fires it. Anyway, sorry to, sorry to jump off script. That's I've got I San Diego State over That's UConn. <laughs> jump off script. Do you really? You have I've San Diego State wow. over UConn. State There's over the upset. UConn. You really are. You, you tried to stop when we said it was a magical run, and then you said, well, no. Hold yeah, on see, they've been consistent. <laughs> yeah, they, have been. they have been. That's you, a magical run if they beat UConn. UConn. If you look at their, their statistical profile, they are probably the least likely team in the one seed to be upset. Yeah. Right. I think because long at that, they're long. They're not. They don't have to face off against the Lancers in correct. the first round. <laughs> um, UConn has so many different weapons on offense. They're solid enough defensively. They have length. They have speed. Decently athletic. They have an X factor in Stefan Castle. My gut tells me this is where they go out. So I have neither Purdue or UConn surviving the Sweet mm. Sixteen. So moving on to the Elite Eight. This is, again, where I think Iowa State has to buck some of these recent trends, buck some of that history where they they won the conference tournament, they finished in the top couple, top few of the Big 12, which is, for my money, the best basketball conference in America right now. They're battle-tested. Otzelberger's a good coach. I'm a big uh, Taman Lipsy guy. Milan Momsilovich, a big guy who, funny enough, played with Nick Janowski up in Wisconsin for a couple years, I think can be an X factor for them. They're old, they're athletic enough, they defend their butts off. And if it gets to this point, it's two defensive-oriented teams. It is not a game I will enjoy watching between Iowa State mm-hmm. and San Diego State. I-, I ain't mad if you're playing defense. I respect it. It's just not for me. I-, I would prefer to see games in the 70s or 80s. I don't know if this one even gets to the 60s. But give me the Cyclones making a magical Final Four run. I don't hate it. I like I like that pick. Uh, I, I go pretty chalk in this region altogether. I think Iowa State and Illinois uh, is my matchup in the Sweet 16. Um, and I, I, I like you, like you just said, that that'd be a contrast of styles in in that right. Um, but I do like Iowa State to move on there, and then UConn over uh, Auburn, and then Elite Eight. I do like UConn to reach the Final Four. So I'm very ch- some brackets I don't. I already have the three seeds picked in the South and Midwest region, but in the East I go chalk. Uh, pretty much one through four, and then UConn going all the way. I have Iowa State over UConn. Woo! Mm. Rationale? Oats? Oats. That's it? I love, I love him so much. <laughs> that dude, so I've, I've not heard, I've heard not great things about him as a person, like having a conversation with him, but the dude, the dude just looks like he lives in the weight room too. So That's it's funny. just funny that he's got the tight polo. Right. Uh, James and Lincoln says he picked Duquesne because he doesn't believe in the Big 12. I would believe mm, in the Big 12 nice. before I ever believe in the Big 10. But James and Lincoln, that is one heck of a call. And then uh, Byron the Hog Farmer, laughable that Nebraska's AD will be at the game tomorrow and Trev Alberts won't be there. I don't know. That Thank you for business. clarifying. I forgot who was who's now again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Troy Dannon will be in Memphis. Yes, he's already there. There's pictures. He, he had conversations with Fred Hoiberg. Um, and we didn't talk about that a whole lot yesterday, but Hoiberg, when he got off the plane, was asked about Troy Dannon. Yeah who Fred knows dating back to high school. Yep. Gannon also refed high school basketball like Chris Kaborik. That's, so there's some man. connections there. That might be how that <laughs> hire happened. Maybe, maybe we'll just see Troy Dannon at NSAA State Basketball next year. Supreme to Supreme, too. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. There you go. I want, I want to see, I want to see uh, Jay Foreman, AAU coach extraordinaire, getting in Troy Dannon's face. Hey, man. Game. Hey, That's what I want to see. Hey, I've, seen Jay, I've seen Jay fired up when it comes to some basketball and a hey, – Hey, I had to tone him down. I, <laughs> you know, I heard he had back. to tone you down too. I, no, I, no, come on now. There, the, the, that Northeast Pius game. Jay, Jay was out of control for that one. He was out of control. Northeast Pius. Good he job was, roping him back in. Yeah, somebody's got to do the job. One 
region to go. 75% of our final fours are set. We will go through the West region. Michigan State has already advanced. Arizona has already advanced in that region. We've got North Carolina in progress right now against Wagner. Don't go anywhere. We'll break down the West region, complete our final fours, and be back with more on the block in just a couple minutes. You're listening to coverage of the NCAA tournament live from Buffalo Wings and Rings at 68th and 0 on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. This is Monster Jam. Witness big air, two-wheel skills, backflips, and all-out racing. It's the only place to see the world's best drivers tear up the dirt in your favorite Monster Jam trucks like Grave Digger, El Toro Loco, Megalodon, and more. It's big time fun for the whole family. Monster Jam, as big as it gets. Coming to Pinnacle Bank Arena March 29th and 30th. Brought to you by Big AT Tires, Great Clips, and the original Super Glue. Imagine a healthier, more active, physically fit version of yourself. If you've been putting off getting into shape, now is the time with the Ferrell's Extreme Body Shaping 10-Week Challenge. Our program combines kickboxing, strength training, and nutrition coaching to help you achieve your fitness goals. And ticket listeners, you can get $150 off the enrollment fee. The next challenge begins on March 23rd. You can get all the info at fxblincoln.com. Don't wait any longer. Ferrell's Extreme Body Shaping at 40th and Yankee Hill and 70th and Bind. 93.7 93.7 The Ticket, Fox, KFXL Weather. Brought to you by Bryant Air Conditioning, Heating, Electrical, and Plumbing. Your Lincoln forecast for today, a few flurries possible this morning. Otherwise, mainly cloudy and breezy today with an afternoon high around 56. Tonight, a chance of showers. Otherwise, mainly cloudy with a low around 39. And tomorrow, decreasing clouds to be breezy too with a high around 52. I'm meteorologist Kyle Huck, 93.7 The Ticket, and the ticketfm.com. Mosaic is a nonprofit whole person healthcare organization that embraces God's call and relentlessly pursues opportunities that empower people with diverse needs to live their best lives. Mosaic in Southeast Nebraska, serving Lincoln and Beatrice, would like to invite you to their monthly Discover the Possibilities Tour events. Events are held on the third Wednesday of every month and are a great way to understand Mosaic's mission. To RSVP, please contact Melindy at 402-429-0088 or visit mosaicinfo.org slash southeast Nebraska. Working at Continental in Lincoln isn't a job, it's a career. And right now, they've raised wages again, and they're hiring for production operators at $24.62 per hour, which grows to $28.97 per hour within three years. Skilled trade positions now start at $33.36 per hour with opportunities to make more based on certifications. Continental also has salary jobs available and great benefits plus medical and prescription costs at very low premiums. Dental, vision, and life insurance are offered at no premium cost to the associates with increased bonuses and vacation for new hires. To learn more or apply, go to ContinentalJobs.com with keyword Lincoln. Come work at Continental today. My dream was to work in commercial banking, but it required a college degree and I didn't have one. I found out that Doan had classes for adult learners on the Lincoln campus and online. So I earned my bachelor's degree and five months later, I landed my dream job. I decided to continue my education and now I'm working on my MBA at Doan. For me, the Doan experience has been life-changing. Load up on meat and more this spring at the Mercado by Certified Piedmontese at 84th and Havelock. This week's specials through March 26th is spend $25 and receive a free 10-ounce New York strip, limit four per visit. And don't forget about lunch on Fired Up Friday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Locations on 84th and Havelock and 30th and Yankee Hill in Lincoln or 168th and Maple in Omaha. Get to the Mercado today for the best meat in town. Introducing the Outlet by Sarter Heyman. The Outlet brings you luxurious Sarter Heyman quality jewelry at unbeatable prices. Shop our expansive inventory of overstocked merchandise and a vast estate collection that just hasn't found its home yet. This is your chance to own stunning designer jewelry at a fraction of the cost. Elevate your style at the Outlet by Sarter Heyman, where luxury and affordability meet. Downtown at 12th and O or online at SarterHeyman.com. Wall-to-Wall Wine and Spirits is now open in Lincoln. Shop our expansive collection of wine, beer, spirits, and cigars at 5040 North 27th Street. 
From top shelf liquor to crowd favorite beer, Wall to Wall Wine and Spirits has a beverage for every taste and every budget. Plus, join our loyalty program to earn rewards and save on future purchases. Shop Wall to Wall Wine and Spirits at 5040 North 27th Street in Lincoln. That's 5040 North 27th Street. Action Plumbing, Heating, Air, and Electric brings exciting career opportunities for you or someone you know. They are now hiring plumbers, electricians, and HVAC techs and installers to continually build their professional team. They offer competitive pay and full benefits packages that include health, dental, vision, PTO, and 401k options. Action has created a positive team environment for over 50 years. Apply online at actionlincoln.com. Breathe easier inside your home with Bryant. Eliminate allergens and odors and control humidity too. For a breath of fresh air, call 467-1111. Bryant Air Conditioning, Heating, Electrical, and Plumbing. You're listening to coverage of the NCAA Tournament live from Buffalo Wings and Rings at 68th and 0 on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Now back to On the Block with Strick and Austin on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Get him back, Bach. We in the building. Back. We are still going through the NCAA men's basketball tournament bracket. We're going game by game here. We've done the South. We've done the Midwest. We've done the East, which gives us the West. Bottom left corner, Austin Norman, Jake Bachovin still with you. Jay Foreman makes his glorious return. Welcome back, Jay. We missed you while you were gone. What's happening? I missed you guys. We, we appreciate that. Let's uh, yeah. go to the West here. We're going game by game. Yeah. North Carolina. Currently up by 18 on Wagner. Do we think they hold on and get it done? <laughs> yeah, I do. I yeah, do yeah so. I think that's a safe bet there, Dookie. Y'all, y'all are hating on the Seahawks, but that's okay. Uh, Michigan State already advanced with a 69 to 51 win over Mississippi State. Did you guys pick the Spartans or the Bulldogs? Sparty dogs. I love Tom Izzo. Yeah, never bet against Izzo in March, at least for one game. And so that's what I did this year. I also did not bet against them. All right. Here are the two most fascinating matchups being played in the same location that I would have loved to have gone to. The 512 and the 413 in the West being played in Spokane, St. Mary's and Grand Canyon. We take in the Gales, we take in the Lopes. Bach, we'll start with you. Yeah, it's a it's, it's a good game there. I think I'm going to go with St. Mary's. Uh, like you said, 512 matchups, potential upset there. Uh, but I, I like St. Mary's in this one. I've been better than the Zags out there uh, in, in that conference, so I'm going to go with St. Mary's. Jay? Uh, I'm just going. I'm going with St. Mary's. I know Grand Canyon has had a good year, but St. Mary's I think is a little bit better this year than, in co- in comparison to the competition, especially against Gonzaga. They they've been pretty good. I got the Lopes. I'm going Grand Canyon. This is my 512 special on this half of the bracket. Love St. Mary's. Uh, Randy Bennett's a great coach. Aiden Mahaney is that dude. He's a stud. Uh, St. Mary's recruits Australians the same way Nebraska women's basketball does. There's just a host of them every year. I think this is a went there. He did. It's yeah. Patty Mills went there. There you go, Patty Mills. So I think this is a close game, something in the 68-66 range, but I think Grand Canyon gets it done. Then Alabama and Charleston. Alabama, Kentucky play kind of the same way. A lot of shots, a lot of running, defense optional. Last year, I take – Charleston. They were one of those Cinderella's, one of those darlings that people were on coming into the tournament. Didn't work out so well for them. So I'm taking Alabama in this one. I think this is a game played pretty comfortably in the 80s, if not the 90s. Jay, you're picking the 413. Oh, I'm going Bama. It's not even going to be close. Not even close? Okay. No, it's not going to be close. And Bama's going to be, Bama and Tennessee are going to be the last two SEC. Besides, Bama, Tennessee, Kentucky are going to be the ones making the most noise. You're hating on my guy, Rain Smith from Charleston. Get familiar if you haven't out there, text <laughs> line. Jake, fuck it, your pick. Yeah, I'll go with Bama too, though. I will note they've lost four out of six coming into the tournament, so it is, you know, something to watch out for, but they do have one of the leading scorers in the nation, um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I like their matchup there with Charleston, at least. In the West region, halfway through the first round, the other games in Memphis, the 6-11 in the 3-14 in the West region. Bach, we'll start with you. Clemson and New Mexico. Mm. How, how could I go against Rick Patino? <laughs> uh, Richard Patino. Richard right? Patino. Yeah, Richard Patino. Rich Patino. Uh, It'd be New- very easy for you to go against Rick Yeah, Patino I think most really of them, most Nebraska <laughs> would go against. I mean, Clemson's a, a pretty solid team, but I got to pick an upset here. I got to go with New Mexico. I'm going with Clemson. I watched them a couple years ago. I like the way that they play. But, Jay, that's a couple years ago. I know. Reason, but I was going to say I like their size. 
uh, that they have inside outside game, and they got a couple stretch fours and fives uh, that could cause some problems against New Mexico. I like Richard Pitino, what he's done down there, especially leaving Minnesota and already having a job, you know, and, and be willing to go down to Mex- New Mexico and turn him around. Uh, he's a heck of a young coach, but uh, his his little run today is short lived. Brad Brownell has saved his job a couple different times at Clemson. His seat's been getting warmer and warmer. P.J. Hall is really good. I'm not betting against Jalen House, son of Eddie House, uh, or oh, Minnie Mash. Listen, Jamal he, Mashburn mm, Jr. He's on plus. New Mexico. I'm taking the Lobos. Oh, I'm taking the Lobos. I'm doing it. I like it. Okay. You said just because you said Monster Mash. I'm going. I'm changing. I'm going there to Mexico. Go. I'm, t- I'm changing. There we go. Eddie House was the was the was the was the start of it. And then we got a little Monty or uh, Mash Mini Mash. Mini Mash. It's all good. Uh, the other game there is Baylor and Colgate. Colgate's been in the tournament recently. Haven't done any damage. I've got Baylor. And I think they win this one by double digits. Yeah, again, that Big Twelve has been so tough, uh, and and so they're bat- really well battle tested. Six players scoring double fi- figures for the Bears. I like the Bears as well. Yeah, I like the uh, Bears because of uh, my high school teammate, Jared Nunez, his first assistant. No, oh, Been nice. down there yeah. uh, ever nice. since the Coach Drew's been down there. I'm always going to go to bat for him. The one thing about Baylor, year in and year out, they're long, they're tough. They always put a guard in the NBA. Mm-hmm. I think that that consistently, you know, turning out great players, and they have a system and culture down there uh, that they'll jump up on Colgate and the game will be over by halftime. Last two games in the first round out west. We'll do the 7-10 and the 2-15. That's already over as Arizona beating Long Beach State by 20. Happy trails, Dan Monson. Good luck finding another job if you want. But Dayton and Nevada. The Flyers have been a top 25 fringe top 25 team all year. Deron Holmes the second there. And Nevada is deep. They play a lot of guys. They'll run. Jay, we'll start with you. Dayton or Nevada in the 7-10? Oof. I like Dayton. I like their coach. I like the way they the way they do. Um, I think they're a little bit more physical, so I think they'll be able to kind of beat you up a little bit. And they got a couple guards that can break you down off the dribble, so I, I like Dayton. Fuck. Yeah, I got I to go with Dayton too. Darren Holmes, uh, nearly twenty points per game or over twenty points per game. Uh, I, I think they can get over Nevada here. Is, okay. the, hey, is the French connection still there? The guy from Nebraska that transferred there? Uh, uh, Jordy Shimonga? No, yeah, I believe Shimonga, he's uh, gone. And Yvonne Wadrago is also out of Grand Canyon. Yes, he is. That's right. Yeah, uh, yeah, no Husker connections there. Okay, second round. We all had uh, Dayton and Arizona. Bach, we'll start with you. Flyers or Wildcats? Uh, I'll go with Arizona here. Did they end up pulling away? I'm I'm sure from Long Beach. One by 20. Okay, one by, yeah, yeah. I'll go with Arizona. I'm going to go Arizona. Caleb Love, I think when you have a player that can. Uh, obviously, you know, when I was talking to Strick, he could shoot you, you know, two victory or out of a game. But I think in big moments uh, when they've needed him most, I think he plays really, really well. He didn't really get off as much as it today. So, you know, he's going to be off the charts tomorrow. Uh, I'm, I'm picking Arizona. He shoots Arizona out of this game on Saturday. He'll he goes hero ball. He'll do it eventually. To take over, <laughs> and I do not trust Tommy Lloyd. Arizona's metrics are one thing. The numbers love him. They've played and they've handled tough competition basically all year. Not the greatest Pac-12 conference, not a terrible conference. They won it. Not necessarily encouraged by how they looked in the Pac-12 tournament. And this is where I, I'm holding their history against them. They've got to prove yeah. that they can get over the yeah. hump. Yeah, and yeah. I'm rooting against Caleb Love. Always and forever rooting against <laughs> Caleb Love. So Why? I'm a hater for all sorts of reasons. I've got the Flyers moving on. Um, Baylor and uh, we'll start with you, Bach. Baylor and Clemson. Yeah, I, I'm going to go ahead and move on with Baylor, too. Again, part of it just uh, feeling like they're very well battle-tested throughout the Big 12. I don't think whether it's Clemson or New Mexico uh, that, that Baylor will have too much of a test with them. Jay, I talked you into New Mexico. you taking them again or taking Baylor? No, I'm taking Baylor. It, no, I'm not going against the homeboy. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm taking Baylor. Uh, I don't know if your homeboy counts as my homeboy, but I will take Baylor as well. <laughs> um, top half of the brackets. I have GCU and Alabama in this game. Give me the lopes to the Sweet 16. Tyon Grant Foster is going to go for 30 in an upset win over Alabama. Wow, you are are wild right now, but you could be right. Austin must have something in his drink. I like his. I like he's makes a lot. Of, he like makes a lot of picks here. Doesn't go chuck. Doesn't go the safe route. I usually do go the safe route. So I'm going to Alabama. Yeah, I'm going. I'm going to Alabama. Um, I didn't even pick GCU to get there. So Bama's going to roll. Roll tie. Uh, okay, Bama over St. Mary's. You still taking roll Bama? Roll tie. Yeah, yep. Okay, and roll then tie. 
the top game here, North Carolina and Michigan State. A blue blood versus a considered, but not to my standards, blue blood in Michigan State. We've had this matchup plenty of times in the postseason before. 2009 National Championship comes to mind. There's Carolina in a romp, 89-72. to 72. Bach, we'll start with you, Sparty or the Tar Heels? Yeah, I like Carolina here. Again, Michigan State, uh, Tom Izzo can turn it on in March. Um, but I think North Carolina, uh, despite your feelings toward them, <laughs> might be one of the better, you know, most complete teams. I think Baycott uh, and, and RJ loser. Davis are career a lot loser. better than what you consider them. And for some reason, you call them career losers, but you hold it against Caleb Love from a couple years ago. Uh, they, they were on that did team, they too. Well, they, they did pretty close. Uh, had a big lead over Kansas in the championship game. But and what they up. do, they choked the largest lead in NCAA tournament <laughs> final history. Career loser. Well, as far as that goes, though, I think they're they're due for another run after bowing out early last year. Jay? Oh, you know who I'm picking. Sparty? I'm looking, you love Izzo no, that much? No. No. I love Izzo enough to let him know that he's going home. <laughs> Enjoy the stay in your hotel yeah. room. See you back in East yeah. Lansing. Yep. You, you, you out of here, homeboy. I've got Carolina. I've got him moving on you to do. the Sweet 16. You do. Um, okay, so then for you guys, it'll be North Carolina and Alabama. Jay, we'll start with you. Ooh, this is going to be a game. Carolina or Alabama, the 1-4. Alabama was a bootleg version of Kentucky. If it was Kentucky, <laughs> I'd, pick, I'd pick Kentucky over North Carolina. But I'm going to go Carolina. Too much size, speed, depth, and I, and, it, and I think both of them have coaching pedigree, NCAA tournament pedigree, but I think Hubert Davis – Getting that early championship pedi- experience, mm-hmm. losing like how they did, he, he's learned from it. Obviously, with a little bit of a kind of a top, tumultuous year last year, I think North Carolina is ready to uh, possibly win the whole thing. I got the Tar Heels, too, in what could be a future SEC matchup, as we've <laughs> seen reports throughout this week. But, yeah, I like Carolina in that game. I've got Carolina taking down Grand Canyon to reach the Elite Eight. Bottom half of the bracket. I have Baylor. And Dayton, and I've got Baylor moving on. Championship-level experience. I trust Scott Drew in that one. You guys have Baylor, Arizona. Bach, we'll start with you. Yeah, I like three seeds in this in this, in this this tournament altogether. So I'm going to go with Baylor uh, with the upset over Arizona. Like you said, maybe just holding a little bit of the past against Arizona and giving and Baylor credit for their past as well. Um, but uh, the matchup is, is, is here and now, so we'll see. It'll be a good game. Um, but I do think, like you said, too, Arizona eventually going to shoot themselves out of one of the one of these games. I'm going to go with Baylor too because when I just watched, even though they they got it going against Long Beach State, Arizona did. Their shots, their misses look horrible, they and <laughs> and and the reason why I, I remember watching Washington State going to Arizona on like a Thursday night game or whatever it was, a Wednesday yeah. night game, and how they beat Arizona was length, defense, speed, and physicality. That's Baylor to a T. I'm picking Baylor. There we go. Okay, so here we go. Baylor and North Carolina in the Elite Eight, the regional final for a chance at the final four. Jay, Baylor, North Carolina, picking against the homeboy, picking Hubert. Which way you lean? I'm going, I'm going North Carolina. Okay. Yeah, Jared, he'll forgive me. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> he'll I, understand. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'm watching him right now. North Carolina just sealed the victory. Yeah, like, one down. I like Carolina as well. Go with the one seed out of the West as well as the East for me. Uh, I think Carolina is, is is a team that if they can get going, like any, you know, a lot of these teams, it's all about if you're hitting your stride at the right time. But North Carolina I, at the top of their game, one of the toughest teams to beat in the nation. North Carolina as a one seed averages a final four appearance. Mm. Whenever they're a one seed, they average a final four appearance. Don't care. Give me the Bears. I got Baylor <laughs> over North Carolina. That's where I land in the, the West region. My final four, Baylor out of the West, Iowa State out of the East, Houston out of the South, and Creighton out of the Midwest. Bach, your final four. Well, you got three. But you really do like the Big 12, don't you? I got three, three Not Big on purpose, 12 teams. but I do. <laughs> you do, yeah. Uh, I got two one seeds in my final four, UConn and North Carolina. UConn out of the East, North Carolina out of the West. And then I like some three seeds uh, with the South and Midwest bracket. The three seed, Kentucky out of the South. The three seed, Creighton out of the Midwest bracket. Jay, your final four. Who you got? I got UConn, NC. I reluctantly am, am going to say Duke. 
Mm, that's wow. for, that's for, you want to know why is because I think and here's what this is why <laughs> I think Marquette is going to run into trouble against it, Kentucky against Kentucky. No, matter of fact, I'm taking Duke out of there. It's Kentucky. Oh, okay. there you go. There yeah, you it's go. Kentucky. That's my team. But I think Duke's going to play Kentucky to get there. That's mm, what okay. yeah, okay. But I think with Marquette, right, they've been really good. They're the number two seed. And they have history too, Bach, of being a high seed and tricking yeah. it off, even if it's in the Sweet 16. I think Florida or Colorado is going to give them a lot of trouble, and then they're going to have the, those ugly wounds when they play Kentucky. So I'm bringing Kentucky, and then out. Of, this is the most interesting one is the Midwest. If Purdue doesn't get there this year with the way it's all set up, they, Kansas is hurt. Um, Gonzaga's not as good. Gonzaga, TCU yeah. is uh, like underwhelming. Tennessee's never been there. Yeah, Tennessee's not never been, been there. But I am picking Tennessee. Ooh. Here's why. They got a full-fledged lottery pick, and they play defense. What happens against Purdue when you get against physical teams late in the tournament? Right? Mm-hmm. Edie slows down. Guard play, right? More Getting important. To, right? Tennessee got him. Oh, there Rick Barnes. I like it. Rick yeah. Barnes. There Good we pick. Good pick. Go. There's our final Probably fours. won't happen, but I'm going to pick him anyways. <laughs> well, yeah. There you go. We'll give our national championship picks. We'll talk through the final four. And, hey, stay tuned if you're with us here at Buffalo Wings and Rings. About 10, 15 minutes or so, we will give away more prizes. Raffle drawings, plenty more to go here. One more segment of On the Block. We'll wrap it up next. You're listening to coverage of the NCAA tournament live from Buffalo Wings and Rings at 68th and O on 937 The Ticket and the Ticketfm.com. Breathe easier inside your home with Bryant. Eliminate allergens and odors and control humidity too. For a breath of fresh air, call 467 1111. Bryant Air Conditioning, Heating, Electrical, and Plumbing. Problem gambling can destroy an individual's finances, relationships, physical, and mental health. If you are a loved one or struggling with addiction, contact Choices Treatment Center's 24 hour helpline at 402 476 2300. That's 402 476 2300. Wall to Wall Wine and Spirits is now open in Lincoln. Shop our expansive collection of wine, beer, spirits, and cigars at 5040 North 27th Street. From top shelf liquor to crowd favorite beer, Wall to Wall Wine and Spirits has a beverage for every taste and every budget. Plus, join our loyalty program to earn rewards and save on future purchases. Shop Wall to Wall Wine and Spirits at 5040 North 27th Street in Lincoln. That's 5040 North 27th Street. You don't think about your roof very often, but you should never take it for granted. Roofing Service Company takes every measure to provide you with the highest quality roofing solution. Whether it's a new roof installation, roof repair, or a re-roofing project, their overall goal is to provide you with a pleasant experience and a long-lasting roof. If you have a need for siding or gutters, they're your place too. Visit RoofingServiceCompany.com for more info today. Ooh, what a day. I could sure use an afternoon pick me up. Hold up. The new 93.7 The Ticket location has a milk, coffee, and tea inside? Oh, yeah. This is a game changer. Need an afternoon pick me up? How about a coffee or smoothie on your way to work? Stop by the Ticket Mill location on 1040 O Street to get your go to drink or try out our new game day drinks exclusive to the Ticket Mill location. We know it'll make your day a mill yen times better. Mosaic is a nonprofit whole person healthcare organization that embraces God's call and relentlessly pursues opportunities that empower people with diverse needs to live their best lives. Mosaic in Southeast Nebraska, serving Lincoln and Beatrice, would like to invite you to their monthly Discover the Possibilities Tour events. Events are held on the third Wednesday of every month and are a great way to understand Mosaic's mission. To RSVP, please contact Melindy at 402-429-0088 or visit mosaicinfo.org slash Southeast Nebraska. Constructors is now hiring for all positions with laborers starting at $23 and up based on experience. Constructors has immediate job openings for laborers, mechanics, bridge builders, operators, and drivers. Start your new career today. Constructors offers great pay, health, dental, and vision insurance, paid time off, paid holidays, and so much more. Join the crew today and be a part of Nebraska's oldest paving company dating back to 1908. For a complete list of openings and to apply online, visit constructorslincoln.com. Are you working in or looking to get into the electrical construction industry? 
the electrical workers of Local Union 265 are now hiring licensed journeymen and apprentices and are offering great pay and benefits. Call Mike at 402-875-1034 to apply. Start your electrical career today. Be a memory for your grandchildren. Among Nebraska adults age 65 or older, 47% report current alcohol use. Drinking too much can cause harm to children, family members, and loved ones. By drinking less, you will still be around for your grandchildren. If you or a loved one is looking for help, find a treatment facility near you at findtreatment.gov. For immediate support, call, text, or chat 988. Brought to you by Nebraska DHHS in partnership with SAMHSA. On the block with Strick and Austin. Now to tie it back to Nebraska men's basketball, this group has a chance to do something that hasn't been done before. Yeah. You know, in making a run in the Big Ten tournament, a serious run, in winning the first NCAA tournament game, but they're not going to get there by doing the same things they've always done. It is on this team to step up and change that narrative. It won't change on its well, own. Teams won't play over for you, and that's the mindset well, shift we haven't consistently seen yet. Weekdays from 2 to 4 on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Acres is bringing you the nation's largest indoor display of John Deere equipment and technology. Acres 2024 Ag and Turf Expo showcases everything from tillage and planting to application and harvest. We'll also offer the latest industry insights from ag professionals across the state. Join us in Grand Island at Fauner Park March 21st and 22nd. Go to acres.com slash expo 24 for a complete schedule of speakers and activities. You're listening to coverage of the NCAA Tournament live from Buffalo Wings and Rings at 68th and 0 on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Now back to On the Block with Strick and Austin on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Been a great day out here at 68th and O Street, Buffalo Wings and Rings. Appreciate them hosting us for our March Mayhem. We're here till 6 today. We'll be here 10 to 6 tomorrow as well. Uh, Oregon just went up 10 points on South Carolina. It's 32 to 22, the Ducks in the lead. Want to remind you that tomorrow and Saturday, you can head to TCA Outdoor Power for their customer appreciation and open house celebration. TCA Outdoor Power is Lincoln's only elite steel dealership. They've been in business for over 20 years. And at this open house and customer appreciation day, you get 10% off select steel products and up to $350 off select battery tools. If you buy two steel batteries, you double your warranty. But again, you have to buy it either tomorrow or Saturday, March 22nd and 23rd at TCA Outdoor Power, located at 6210 South 57th Street in Lincoln. I'm Austin Norman. Jake Bakovan, Jay Foreman to my left. Gentlemen, we are on to the final four. We will start with you, Bach. Who wins your semifinals and what's your national championship matchup? Well, we've got UConn and in, in North Carolina, the battle of the one seeds uh, with my East and West bracket. I've got North Carolina winning here. Again, I think RJ Davis, uh, you want strong guard play in the tournament. Um, they've kind of got the a good co complimentary there with Baycott down low too for me. So I kind of like the mix. I kind of shades of maybe Sean May leading the, the NCAA tournament championship years ago. Uh, we'll see if we get that going. I like North Carolina making it to the championship game. And then my battle of three seeds on the other side would be Creighton and Kentucky. Dang. And and I like Creighton or excuse me. I like Kentucky. I can't quite pick Creighton to go all the way. It, it feels weird to pick them into the final four because they kind of, you know, they play they where they're going to. Yeah, they've got some history and some battle to do that. But they made the lead eight last year for the first time in program history. I think they'll make the final four for the first time in program history this year. But that's as far as it goes. I'll have North Carolina and Kentucky in my championship game. I got uh, North Carolina, excuse me, North Carolina against UConn. I'm picking North Carolina, same reason for Bach. I just feel like the guard play, bank guy underneath is just going to be. And, and, they, and they are long. North Carolina is long and athletic. In deep. So I'm, I'm picking North Carolina to get to the championship game. I'm doing a pivot here. I'm doing a pivot Ooh, here. I still, pivot? I still got Kentucky going to the, to the final four. I'm going, block. I'm changing the game. Uh -huh. West region? Let, check this out. Purdue's going to get there. I'm changing oh, Purdue okay. over Tennessee. There you go. And I'm even going to go a step farther. Check this out. Purdue's going to make the oh, championship man. game. Woo! But not so fast there, Matt Painter. If you can't handle Huskers rushing, rushing the court, you can't beat Carolina. Carolina is my national champion. <laughs> and I go. hate to say it because I love me Calipari in, in, uh, mm. in Kentucky. But I just feel like Zach Eady is just going to be too much work inside. 
Fox, did you give your national championship pick? Uh, well, I've got North Carolina and Kentucky. I've got two brackets, and I picked one of each, so it's hard for me to split down the middle there. You got it. You got it. You're live but on I, air. But I'm live Plant on air. Plant your flag, Buck. Plant your flag. I will ultimately go with North Carolina to win this one. I think it's a safer bet at the one seed. Y'all are in cahoots. You are doing the same thing. I, <laughs> whatever. My final four, Baylor and Iowa State on the left side of the bracket. Give me Baylor. I have the Bears making it to the national championship game. Just the way that bracket sets up for them. I like the matchups for the Bears. Yes, it is an all-Big 12 semifinal, but uh, hey, what can you do? It's already locked in. So Baylor out of the left mm. side of the bracket. In the right, Houston over Creighton is my pick. I also have the Blue Jays getting there because of how that bracket sets up for them. Jay, you were gone. I picked TCU over Purdue in the round of 32. I think Creighton sneaks by Tennessee and then uh, gets a matchup with TCU to go to the final four. Houston's path will be tough. I think they'll be battle tested, but I'm taking Houston as my national champion because they will have some time off. Houston is not deep, but what Houston will be able to do you is pick- play 40 minutes of hard basketball, get a day off, do it again. I trust their toughness. I love Shed and Cryer. Then they get a week off. They do it again. Play, off, play. Then you're in the Final Four. Houston's been there before. Not, a couple of years ago, Houston I'll made tell, it to I'll the Final well, Four. Austin. I have got the oh. Houston Wildcats <laughs> with their bye weeks, making it not just to the Final Four, not just to the National Championship game. Boy, taking I tell down you, Austin, Creighton and Baylor. You can Kelvin sell somebody. Sampson on the board. You can sell somebody some some stories, boy, between <laughs> Grand Canyon State and Houston. Getting man, he's got some picks. A, yeah, but I ain't buying it. No, nope. Well, negative Ghost Rider. You don't have to convince everyone; just have to yeah. convince someone. I That's hear you. right, Matt. <laughs> Illinois up three on Moorhead State right now. Fourteen and a half minutes left. There, Nevada and Dayton nodded at eleven early on. Oregon by two possessions, thirty-two twenty-six over South Carolina. Those are the games in progress that we're monitoring right now. I want to give a big thanks to Nebco for sponsoring On the Block. And again, cannot thank the fine folks of Buffalo Wings and Rings enough for their gracious hosting, their support of us here at 93.7 The Ticket. For Nick, for Rico, for Jay, for Bach, I'm Austin. Don't go anywhere, even though On the Block's done. We got Old School coming up next here from Buffalo Wings and Rings on 93.7 The Ticket. Life is all about balance, so how about a little sweet and a little heat to make your week? At Wings and Rings, we're introducing our all-new hot honey.